Studios getting set to cover five games for you tonight. Four of those series tied at a game apiece, including the Abs and Wild, which is about to come your way next. And Ray, uh, as you take a look at this one, Colorado has to weather the storm. Playoff hockey back in Minnesota for the first time since 92. Yeah, Minnesota's going to be very excited to get this game underway. They've, they've got tremendous fans anyway, and they play very well at home. The, the Wild had 25 wins out of, their fir, out of their 41 home games this year. They've done a very good job shutting down Peter Forsberg, Alex Tangay, and Milan Hayduk in the first two games. It's going to get a little tougher for Forsberg as well. Minnesota has the last change. You'll see a lot of Willie Mitchell and Wes Walls against Peter Forsberg's line. If they shut that line down, look for Joe Sackick to try and have a big game for Colorado. Hockey is back in Minnesota. The NCAA champs are the Golden Gophers for the second straight year. And playoff hockey, Stanley Cup style, is back in Minnesota. You're about to see it, the Wild and the Avs. Steve Levy, Darren Pang have the call coming up next. Oh yeah, summertime. Flip flop, small top, party bumper non-stop. So much ice in my cooler, you think I was a jeweler. Bling, catching rays, making plays. Summer got more zap than a microwave. Dink, blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes too. All the honeys checking who? The king of Malibu. The silver bizzle. I had lotion on my hands. I burn easily. Enjoy the convenience of great tasting filtered water in your kitchen, in your bar, and even in your bathroom. The Aqua Sweet Filtering Faucet from Merlin. Buy it for looks, buy it for life. Michelin designed the cross-terrain SUV tires specifically for SUVs to help provide responsive handling and a smooth ride. You'd be surprised just how smooth. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. This week on Home Makeover, we're at the home of Paul and Christine Schmidt. Christine wants a new backyard, but they're tight on money, so let's get to work. Take a look! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, it must have cost a lot! Not at all. Right now, every Yamaha Woo! motorcycle and ATV is available for just 3.9% APR all the way to 2005. Plus, get up to $300 customer cash on select models. And just look at the results. Next week, we tackle a bathroom renovation. So long! Two back-to-back -back sports centuries on ESPN Classic. Each night, the icons of yesteryear, then the heroes of here and now. Sports Century's Old School, New School Week. All this week, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Do not attempt to adjust your set. The screensavers have taken control. Every weekday, Leo, Pat, and the gang tackle your tough questions, bringing you the cool new stuff, tech news, and special guests. Get up, get on up, get on up. Give me a break. Taking computer help to the next dimension. The Screen Savers, weeknights at 7, only on Tech TV. I'm Annette Medrano. My son Andrew was born three months early and spent almost six weeks in the hospital fighting for his life. His twin brother Rudy was born even earlier. He did not survive. Today, Andrew is a happy, healthy 14-year-old. However, many families continue to struggle with the often severe, long-term effects of premature birth. Help fight prematurity. Sign up for Walk America today. Register online at walkamerica.org. The Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN2 brought to you by Hyundai. When your car comes with America's best warranty, you win Hyundai. And Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light, cold down easy. And Southwest Airlines, official airline of the National Hockey League. The XL Energy Center here in St. Paul continues to rock and roll as we get to set for Game 3 Western Conference Quarterfinal Series. In Game Number 1 of the series in Denver, Minnesota, a 4-2 win. And Saturday afternoon, back in Colorado, the Avalanche, a 3-2 win, and that sets us up for the potential momentum-changing game in the series, game number three. Rob Schick and Stephen Waldo will be the referees. Vaughn Rohde and Mark Wheeler will work the lines. We are underway. Joe Sackett.
Rocket wins the opening faceoff against Darby Hendrickson. The Avalanche and the visiting Blue and Maroon and the Minnesota Wild for the first time in the home white uniforms for the Stanley Cup playoffs. Here's Kirk Ronning off the early turnover. He's able to skip by Battaglia. And the Wild with that things up. Ronnie gets the first shot away. Stick saved by Wild. Ronnie's second shot never made it through. Hendrickson trying to poke it home and can't. And Morris on the far side can't clear. Just as you would expect, the Wild come out way fired up. Zuzan was able to keep it momentarily, and only now can Battaglia and the ads clear, and they'll need a change. Cross eyes. Here's Marion Gallery. Makes the move at center. He's one on five. Got it across. Monty Lapsinen got the shot away and partially fanned on it. Here's Gabbard. Gets a pick. Cut to the walls in front. Coming through the crease area. And it's backhanded deeper now. Wild out for a stroll. Up the far side for Forsberg. Hit by Gabbard. Come up with the first body check. Marion Gabbard has thrown in the series. And he dented Peter Forsberg, who comes right back. Here's Forsberg. Spins away from Schultz. Hits the bridge. Picked off by Lachinen and pumped out the center. Furious pace right off the hop for the Minnesota Wild. A wonderful start. Some good scoring chances on Patrick Waugh. Quite the opposite of we saw in, that what we saw in Denver when it was Rollison. Here's Dupree from the angle. Let it go on the left hand. Saved by Waugh. Debris slaps it out of play. A minute 37 in and they're on their feet already here in St. Paul. Jacques Lemaire, the head coach of the Wild, was worried about their pregame skate this morning. Well, don't have to worry about the energy level and the enthusiasm early on. This is the last chance from Pasquale Dupuis, who continues to shoot the puck hard at goaltender Patrick Waugh as we take a look at Coco Jacques Lemaire, the head coach of the Wild. Off the face-off win, Colorado Schooler trying to swing it around. Kept in momentarily by Stevenson, and the Wild look to set things up now. Here's Dupuis away from Skula. Marchman comes over to get a piece of him. Able to work it off of Pierre Marc Bouchard, the 18-year-old, making his first appearance in this playoff series. Up the boards, and Wilson able to get it away. Here's Rico Hall, lets it go, and missed by the near side. Hall fires again, missed the mark. Avalanche have yet to get a shot on Dwayne Rollison. Here's Sackett, fighting off a check. Sekarash came over to rub him out. Mark Bouchard able to push it ahead. And here's Kuba leading the rush at center. He was able to dump it off to Stevenson, and the Wild to go for a change. Good pressure behind the Colorado net. Joel Tock on the forecheck, pass picked off. Out at center at Sackett. Has Heinoid and Battaglia with him. Here's Blake the trailer, got the shot away. Rollison is out, fanned on his first attempt, got a second chance. Battaglia tries to knock it down with the glove. Here's Sackett now, down on him. Try to hit Heinoid. Dan Heinoid, a local product from Elk River, Minnesota. He was part of the starting lineup. And as you might expect, he was booed. The 15 or 20 friends and family in attendance can't outnumber the other 19,000. Here's Forsberg at center now. Off walls and offside at the Minnesota Blue Line. Well, you mentioned Bouchard, the 18-year-old first-round draft pick. And very much a big part of the future of the Minnesota Wild. Head coach Jacques Lemaire kept him out of the first two games, more or less protecting Bouchard, not knowing full well how the Minnesota Wild would respond in Colorado. I talked to Bouchard this morning. He wasn't sure if he was going to get the nod in this evening's game, but he was ready to go and understood the choices made by Jacques Lemaire. Shots on goal in the first period combined. Avalanche 31 and the Wild 7. That's in the first two games. But here tonight in the home playoff opener. Shot! Tange got a second whack as Rollison was out of position. And the first shot on goal tonight for the Avalanche goes in. Rollison got caught behind the net, Steve. And a little miscommunication there. It's a tough play to make. He's trying to get that to his backhand. But Tangay, who has had very few scoring opportunities and got some encouragement this morning from his head coach, Tony Granato. First problem was Rollison tried to go on the forehand. He wasn't able to raise the puck. And he's got the reverse curve, so he's stronger at his backhand. He tried to lift it over Forsberg, wasn't able to do so. Forsberg then punched it in front, and this play went off the skate. 
of Willie Mitchell beyond Walsh, and Tangay scores the first goal of the game. Tango, that's already the second time, though, in the first three and a half minutes, and Rolls has had problems with the puck. Behind the net earlier, he tried to lift it and fanned on it, but he had so much time, he got a second chance to put it off the glass. So we'll see if that continues to be an issue. It certainly was on the first goal. Alex Tangay came in with no points in the first two games. He gets the goal, the assist, the lone assist to Peter Forsberg, his second assist of the series, 3.33 is the time of the even strength goal. one nothing Colorado, and the team scoring first so far has won the previous two games. Well, as we know in this series, Wes Walls has been the guy that has been on the ice for the majority of the even strength shifts for Peter Forsberg, and, and Forsberg's line is able to capitalize, but Walsh didn't have to go behind the net for Peter Forsberg. His job is still to look around and be aware of what other guys are doing. So it was an unfortunate bounce there, but a good one for Alex Tangay, who's on the doorstep. And, you know, Tangay hasn't had that much action. I mean, game one, he had two shots, was a minus one. Game two, he had only one shot that whole game. And I know this morning at practice, head coach Tony Granato had Hey Duke and Tangay and was talking to him, giving him some encouragement this morning, talking about a few ways to get open, get some shots. Hendrickson and Sackick on the draw. Sackick able to win it back for Rob Blake. Willie Mitchell also got caught in an uncomfortable position there. He had his back facing Tangay. And he's facing the goal instead of the goal scorer. Good forecheck thrown by Colorado. And it's pushed out to center ice. Pataglia able to finish his check. Here's Blake. He's chopped out by Zuzin now. Centered in front. Rollis in the left pad. And he'll get the whistle. one nothing already here. We check in with Pat Boyle. What's going on elsewhere, Pat? All right, Steve, check in with the Leafs and Flyers also tied at a game apiece. Eric Desjardins, the former Flyer captain, putting the Fly guys up two, zip it back. Come the Leafs, Robert Reichel tallies, beating Chet Monick. It's 2-1, Flyers after 20. I score in the first period there as Tony Granato watches. Yeah, I think that's one of Tony's strengths, too, is the, his ability to communicate and put his arm around a guy's shoulder, giving some positive re reinforcement. Forsberg will go back to the point. Quick shot. Rollison will hang on. Yeah, good save by Dwayne. But let's get back here this morning at the skate. Steve, let's turn our attention to a little Panger Vision. Hey, Panger Vision. And here's our cameras working the morning skate. And there's Tony talking to Alex Tangay and just going over a couple of little things, making sure they keep positive and the attitude stays strong. And Milan Hayduk and Tony were talking about little areas to play. Um, even at one point during that, Tony was leaning down, acting as if he was Dwayne Rollison, talking to him about where to put the puck. Tangay got the shot away. It was stopped. Think it hit Zuzan in the back. And Minnesota looks a bit flustered here, Panger, after dominating the first four minutes or so. The Colorado goal has appeared, has appeared apparently shaken them up just a little bit. Offside is the call. There's Tony, and Tony was telling me this morning that you know, as that game went on, they had a comfortable 3-1 lead in game two, but Minnesota didn't go away. And he also felt that that they may, might have given Minnesota a little reason to get confidence, too, because Minnesota did gain confidence in that third period. They made it 3-2, and they had pressure in the final minutes to tie that game up. So the face-off number, Colorado has won all seven of them. Sent softly into the Minnesota, and Rollison out thought about it a second time. Kubo was rubbed out in a big way by Heidel. Here's Dowder, shoot it around. Puck to the corner, and back behind the Colorado net now. Wild had the first three shots on goal of the game. Colorado's had the only three since. Sekaraj hit by a pair of players and lost his stick, and it's offside at the Minnesota line. There's always a lot more pressure, Steve. We talked about it in the open, being on your home ice. And the first couple of minutes, Dwayne Rollison saw Patrick Waugh make a couple of real good saves down at the other end. The crowd is jumping, all the enthusiasm is going one way. And Dwayne Rollison had a couple of situations where he went out to play the puck, as you mentioned, Steve, even before the goal that went in. You've got to make good, sharp, clear decisions. And I wonder, too, I'm watching the lineup changes that were made here by Jacques Lemaire, Bouchard's in, Marshall's not a forward in tonight's game. He's a defenseman again. Brad Brown's not playing. The first shift in front of the net, Marshall started taking off towards a forward position, and I saw him put on the brakes and go back in front of his right. net, you know, knowing, hey, I'm a defenseman now. He's played forward the majority of the year. 
Only Colorado lineup changed Serge Aubin out of the lineup. Jeff Chance was back, who did play in game one. Here's Sackett. Susan got a piece of him. Sackett is now pinned by down. Centering feed. And it's off of Park skate. Hendrickson able to get it away to Richard Park. Park hit the post behind Patrick Wad. Game two could have tied that game. And that was a tricky shot by Park on Patrick Wad. Blake will pin Park to the boards. Now release. Sekarash behind his back. Mark Bouchard will dump it in deeper. Here's Cliff running on it. Ryan Brecht over to whack it away from him. Right to Blake, puts it off the glass. Kuba came over off the glass, and it hopped on running, or else he would have been able to keep it in the zone. Here's Battaglia. He'll rifle it around the boards. Chance over on the forecheck, never got to it. And the Wild do. Here's Sekarash, the long shot. Wild makes the save. Stevenson following on the long rebound. Hall deep in his own end, can't get to Dupuis tried to hit down, racing down the right wing. Now the other way. The Avs shoot in. Here's the foot in deep. He's checked. Back behind the net now. Here's Forsberg. Turnaround shot by Wilsey. Rebound was there. Scoring opportunities. Welcome aboard. Please turn off all unapproved electronic devices. We have a very crowded flight today, and all overhead space is full. The captain expects frequent turbulence, so please remain seated at all times. And we do anticipate a late arrival. Thank you. The Hyundai Santa Fe, with America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. When you upgrade your travel plans, you win. She's all you'd ever want. She's the kind I'd like to fault and take to dinner. But she always knows her place. She's got style, she's got pace. She's a winner. She's a lady. Whoa, 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 she's a lady. Press 1 or wait for the job. I think I need my car back. I have to go to a meeting. Okay, Daddy. I'll be home in 10 minutes. Okay. Life's good when you're George Lopez. But life's better when you're George Lopez and you have the cell phone with a walkie-talkie. Get right through. Nextel. Uh, this is one way to come back from giving up a goal while you're behind the net. Dwayne Rollison, real strong play here. Wrap around attempt anyway. Mishandled there by Forsberg and then played by Hayduke. Rebound on the doorstep. Made a fine save with his left pad and then got a wise rebound covered up. There were penalties after that scramble in front. Marshall for Minnesota. Wilsey for Colorado. Cross-checking and roughing respectively at 7.32. Touch through the hand pass. Let's go back to Pat Boyle. All right, Steve, game three sends in Isles. It is one all. Time winding down in the first. Lexi Yashin sets up Randy Robitaille, makes it 2-1. Islanders after 20 minutes. Lexi Yashin having himself a bit of a series early on. There you see the combatants in the respective penalty box. And a little wide open ice, four on four for the next minute 49. And off the draw, Tangay won it cleanly. And he goes back for foot. Tangay out there with foot and Blake. And the fourth member of the ads is Joe Sackett. Out at center. Tic tac toe. Man, you can just see the way the Avalanche passed the puck. It's on the tape every time. Here's Blake. Towards the front of the net. Sackett couldn't knock it down. Kuba, Hendrickson, Gabarik, and Sekarash, the four Minnesota Wild players. Off of Gabrick and cleared to center. Good defensive play and positioning there by Marion Gabrick on Joe Sackett. Not allowing Sackett to make that pass over to Adam Foote at the point. Minute 10 left in the four on four. And Foote will leave it there. Abs with the wind out. One touch to center. Here's Milan Hadouk. Hadouk on Schultz. Let it go. The bullet off the glass. 
past Forsberg. Here's Park. Sends it to Schultz across ice. Here's Nick Schultz. Gabra couldn't hang on to that. Park couldn't hang on to that pass on the backhand. A hard push pass. Continues to battle it. Shoots it in, but take it away. Center in front. Stop by Ron. And the rebound right back to him. Here's Ronnie who was rubbed out trying to center. And Morris takes it away for Colorado. Good scoring chance there for Minnesota. Forsberg, nice pass. Battaglia lets it go. Rollison able to hang on. Stay with us here on ESPN2 following our game tonight. The defending Stanley Cup champion Detroit Red Wings, they were in all sorts of trouble against Paul Correa, John Sebastian Jaguar, and the Mighty Ducks. The action comes your way immediately following our game here on ESPN2. And the atmosphere in Anaheim ought to be outstanding tonight. Yeah, you have to think that they're hoping for a same type of goal to change the momentum that they had last year when they failed Vancouver 2-0 and scored on Dan Kluche from center ice. But you know what? Jagir's rock solid back there. He has had an outstanding Vesna type, at least nomination, type year. Kuba got it ahead softly. Here's Loxman. Foot checks in. Blake comes over to help out and takes it away. Ten seconds left in a four-on-four. Four. Here's Battaglia. Battaglia let all the Avalanche players and shots on goal in game number two. He had five of them. West Walls breaking back at center. He's checked by Ryan Brett. Kuba picks it up the water just onside, but they're out of gas and need a change. Penalties are over. Back to five aside. Ryan Wilson got the key goal in that last game for Colorado. He'll go off for a change as well. And the Wild moving away at center. Here's Dow trying to get around Martin Skula. So his ice time significantly cut in game number two. Schultz in on the pitch, chance to rub him out. And we've got penalties coming up. It's going to be a minor penalty behind the play. Hey, what's up? Stevie Waltham. Stay on the play. Trip 41. 4 1. All right. Martin Skula goes off for tripping. ESPN the magazine on newsstands now. Hey, prima clock! Get off the ice! It's more like prima donna clock! Hey, does anybody know the Russian word for loser? It's prima clock! Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> visiting from Western Russia, the parents of right winger Alex Prima Wanna get away? Now you can. Fly Southwest Airlines with fun fares as low as $49 each way. You are now free to move about the country. Oh yeah, summertime. Flip top, small top, party bumper non-stop. So much ice in my cooler. You think I was a jeweler? Bling, catching rays, making plays. Summer got more zap than a microwave. Dink, blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes too. All the honeys checking who? The king of Malibu. The silver bizzle. Lotion on my hands. I burn easily. Welcome aboard. Please turn off all unapproved electronic devices. We have a very crowded flight today, and all overhead space is full. The captain expects frequent turbulence, so please remain seated at all times. And we do anticipate a late arrival. Thank you. The Hyundai Santa Fe, with America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. When you upgrade your travel plans, you win. Here's the minor penalty. A little bit of a slew foot there by Skula to help down Dowd. First power play of the game goes to the Wild, and their special teams have been absolutely outstanding. Skula, the call is tripping at 10.02. And the Wild is shooting around. Park was spilled, and here's Ronning will play the point. The wild power play, as you mentioned, spectacular special teams. So far, three of eight. Brunet shot. Stopped by Wild. Puck had the rebound and went wide. Three of eight so far is this Minnesota power play. The best power play in the Stanley Cup playoffs so far. And a couple of good chances there for Minnesota. Not to mention the fact that shorthanded, they've scored a goal as well. West Wall scored a big goal in Colorado to tie the game up, although they went on to lose. So the special teams have been a main factor. Philippe Kuba scored the first ever playoff goal for Minnesota. 
Who's going to get the first playoff goal ever in Minnesota Wild home Stanley Cup playoff history? Hayduk the other way. Has Messier with him. Hayduk's rubbed out, but he still has the puck. And he'll shoot it in a little deeper. Ronning reversed the float nicely, and Cuba will give it off to Cliff Ronnie. 840 left here in the first. Colorado has the lead, one to nothing, on an Alex Tangay goal off a misplay by Dwayne Rollison back behind his net. There's Ron misplaying it behind his own net. Nearly at his pocket pit. As it's back out to center. Cuba was drilled. Stevenson. They both run into Riku Hall. And the crowd roars. Boy, Stevenson, was, he was a main physical force in game two. He didn't play game one. He took the goalie interference penalty in game two, so I'm sure the refs will be watching that closely. Nifty passing work in the neutral zone. Finally, it results in getting in deep. Blake partially fanned on his clearing attempt. One second left. School is out of the box. Wild do register three shots on goal. Dowd is hit by Chance. Wrapped around the boards. Wild able to hold in the zone momentarily. Brunette doing the hard work along the boards with Skula, who's just out of the box. Here's Brunette. Brunette and Walls each have a goal in the first two games. Off the side of it by Schultz, and they're going to say a hand pass. That's the reason for the whistle. It's 734 left in the first. Well, Patrick was communicating with the officials, letting them know that it was a hand pass behind the net. After he saw good pressure there, as we take a look, 23 saves in the first one. He didn't like what happened there and thought that he needed a couple of breaks. In game two, he started out, as he told me this morning, nervously. And it wasn't until he ended up making those saves in the second period did he start calming down a little bit. He talked to me a little bit about momentum, trying to make saves. And also, Steve, the fact that he doesn't know these shooters, they all come at you looking the same. So when Lapsinen took that hard shot, he said, man, he can shoot the puck hard. That right. <laughs> That's interesting, right? You've told me on many occasions, we got a whistle as that shot right before. You've told me on many occasions, you kept the book on the different shooters that you were facing. and. Maybe that's what you're talking to Patrick about right now this morning. Uh, we were. He pulled me aside, and I, I thought, like always, you want to talk about golf and maybe Mike Weir winning the Masters. And, right. of course, Patrick's a member of the great Castle Pines there. No, he was, he was talking about momentum and knowledge and shooters and Lauksen in shot. And it was, uh, it's, it's, all, it's always great having conversation with Patrick. He's such an observant guy. He sees everything that's going around. Avalanche get to it. The near side, Forsberg on it. And he'll push it away. Here's Hedouk now, trying to make the one-on-one -on -one move. Can't beat Willie Mitchell. Forsberg away from Walls. Tangay tried to cut it off and couldn't. Kept in by Morris at the point. Here's Tangay, able to center, but only the Wilder there. Here's Auntie Loxanen. Loxanen tried to head, man. They got the bounce, got bounced by Debris, and Gabrick had it momentarily. What a neat little saucer pass. Luxley like trying to lead the receiver, trying to feed it up there by the face-off circle, hoping the speedy Gabrick could catch up to it. Did you see Hey Duke get pushed ahead by Forsberg yeah. a little bit? Yeah, get him back up in the play. Yeah, yeah. smart play. Here's Hendrickson with a step now. And now put on the brakes and shoot it softly around. Wow, will play it around far side. Here's Battaglia trying to get it out. Ryan Pratt got really hit. And that's going to be the penalty. Hendrickson is going to go. It was before the puck got there, and Hendrickson made him pay the price. Penalty is on Minnesota, number 14, two minutes for boarding. There's the left-handed golfer, Rob Schick, making the call. And Jacques Lemaire's penalty killing unit is going to get tested, and Hendrickson's a big part of that. So you don't want those guys in the box, that's for sure. The power play of the Colorado Avalanche all year long was sixth in the league in the playoffs so far. It's at 11% in this one here. Here's what you were talking about, Steve. Let's give him a little push. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Get her going here. Rob's a left-handed golfer? He sure is. Plays a big fade. Big fade. Mike Weir's left-handed golfer. That's you're well. exactly right. Pretty good for a guy who doesn't know his right from his left. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought I'd impress him. <laughs> Hendrickson for boarding at 13.42. It's the first power play of the game for Colorado. And there you see the numbers on the abs power play in the regular season in the playoffs. Broken stick by Sackick, and he'll get a new twig. Wow will sweep it away from Dupuis, and the Avalanche look to move it away. At center, Morris will shoot it around. Kept in by Blake, but Taglia took his man down. Penalty coming up. So much for the power play. Two minutes for 
tripping. And that's the second tripping call in as many games. Actually, they gave him an interference call in game two when Walsh was given a diving call on the same play. Here, Bataglia, his stick was actually just corkscrewed in there. I look right here, he's got, the, he's got the stick right, oh yeah, right there, on the right on the rear end. And it, it was enough to haul Zuzan down, and that will nullify the short-lived power play that the Avalanche just had it. At four-on-four four hockey so far in this series, the Avs have got one goal, and the Minnesota Wild have zero. Foot and DeVries out there with Heino. And Riku Hall. Whoa! Hit man pass for Heino, who's got the good speed. Mitchell got over just in time. Down and Joel Tuck. Out there with Will Mitchell. As Mitchell is hit by Heino. And Lubomir Sekarash. Here's Dad. He'll get it away from the green. Here's Joel Tuck. With speed. Mitchell come and try to help out. Joel Tuck let it go. Shot was blocked. And it's still loose. Oh. DeVries is back to pick it up. What a play one on one by Rob Blake. He just never wavered. Here's DeVries. Let's it go. Rolls to say that trouble with the rebound. Hall throws his man down. And then an extra shot to the helmet. As we step out, one nothing abs. Welcome aboard. Please turn off all unapproved electronic devices. We have a very crowded flight today, and all overhead space is full. The captain expects frequent turbulence, so please remain seated at all times. And we do anticipate a late arrival. Thank you. The Hyundai Santa Fe, with America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. When you upgrade your travel plans, Scoops one up and in. When you pass, the only place to pass, obviously, is on the top side. Nathan Frazier with his head on it. Stick in the back of the knee. Nathan Frazier with the equalizer. We are tied. Thank you. Happens to be my very first million seller with the Chirales, ladies and gentlemen. Before I knew it, uh, flight time was rapidly approaching. Now, the solid rocket flight off. And from that point on, there is no doubt in your mind that you are going somewhere. You cannot use tax dollars on the sewage treatment plant. That is through user fees only, and the council has no say so. back on October 19th here against Detroit and we will break that record crowd tonight with a new record as soon as we get the official attendance for you we will get it four on four for 42 seconds or so and then a mini power play loose puck Wah was able to stick it aside up the far side there's Susan the mini power play for Minnesota of course as if I intended to say that the first time Four and a half left here in the first. Forsberg taking his time, now building up speed, makes the movement across the line. Hits the brakes. And a look for some help, trying to cycle it down deeper into the corner. Actually, it never gets that far. Here's Forsberg. Gabbert's got a stick on him. Mitchell comes over and bangs him. Hayden found in full check now. He's rubbed out of the play. 25-second power play now for Minnesota. Bataglia remains in the box. Boy, that's a heck of a shift by Willie Mitchell, boy. Followed Peter Forsberg all the way to the blue line. Long reach, good physical presence, and then gave him a good hit by the face-off circle. Power play, 10 more seconds, and across the line now. Brunette couldn't take it off the boards. Mike Keane forced it away from him. And here's Gabriel looking. Nice soft pass. Backhand shot stopped by Wall. And the rebound of Colorado as Battaglia is out. Here's Sackett, one on three. Now waits and gets some help. Got it on goal. La Pante Rolison. Interesting decision there by foot. Here's Mark Bouchard. Backhander and missed it. Foot had a chance to keep that in. Elected to stay back. Here's Stevenson. Down deep for Mark Bouchard. DeVries on it. Checked by the 18-year-old. 
Kept in by Kuba. Towards the front of the net and tipped out the center by Keane. But Taglia went down trying to get a call. And it's out at center ice. Heino backhands in as he spins away from the check. Off the boards. Good speed by Heino. That is stick knocked out of his hands. Back to the point. Much going to let it go. Left skate save. Rolls. Rolls it down again. Look backhanded off the glass. Chopped that up the boards. Possession of Colorado. Back behind the net. Here's Hall. He's hit there by Marshall. Marshall continues to tie him up. Loose puck. And Dupuis pumps it off the boards and out the center. Very close to too many men. It's a bad change by Minnesota. But they'll get away with it for the time being. Susan was hit as he shot in by Marchman. Always a threat on the body. Yeah, Marchman had a couple of minor penalties in the last one. I know the coaches were concerned about keeping him settled down a little bit. Let's go back to Pat Boyle. All right, Steve, Lee Flyers, Master Chef, Mike Weir on hand for this one. Robert Reichel might get himself a garment the way he's played. He has a goal in this one. Nice pass there to Thomas Caverle, the equalizer, 2-2 right now in the second period. All right, Pat, thanks. We'll see you in 205 along with Ray Ferraro. They'll have the Dodge Intermission Report. More highlights the Flyers, Lee Senators and Islanders, and the Red Wings and Ducks. A preview of that one coming up after us. Good hockey. I can't wait. Leave this game, go watch another game. It's it's all about hockey right about now, isn't it? It's a, it's a great time of year. First round is might be the best of all the rounds with all the games and so much action, the late night doubleheaders in the East, etc. Yeah, good job last night in Edmonton by Danny Potten and Dave Ryan. We yep. enjoyed that game. And it's flipped out to center ice, minute 40. And it's actually flipped into the crowd. Minute 41 left here in the first. The only goal of the game coming at 3.33. Alex Tangier's first point for the series. We spent some time with Willie Mitchell this morning, and we talked a lot about his defensive prowess and the responsibility that he has. Watch this play here. It's going to follow him, follow Forsberg, force him at the blue line. And this is not five seconds later. He went back to his position and bang, a real good hit there on Peter. In game one, Mitchell played 28-31, 25 of those minutes at even strength. Game two, it dropped to 19-16. He told us this morning that that 28 is a little high for him, a little too many minutes. And he said, you know, hey, the difference in regular season minutes and playoff minutes, it's a big difference. Yeah, he's done a great job, though. He's making a name for himself all around the NHL. That's really the beauty of this first-round playoff series, and the Wilder really introducing themselves to the rest of the country. They're obviously very popular here. But we're making Wes Walls to be a household name. Mitchell got the shot away. We'll see when down to try to block it. Good puck pressure here now. For Minnesota, Dow got behind the net. 65 seconds left in the period. Here's Dow along the board. Here's Joltak out. The towards the front. Sucker Ash came in deep. Brunetta swinging around far side. Dow will get to it first. Marchman will rub him out. Centering feed. Loose puck in front. Joltak couldn't tee it up. And the Avs get to it with Wilson. He tried to headman for Tangay. Would have been icing, but Tangay got there first, and he paid for it in a big way. Good look at the action right in your living room. The puck comes free to Colorado. Hey, Duke, open momentarily. Here's Forsberg, a magician with the puck. Walls on him. Hey, Duke, got it in front of the net. Knocked down. DeVries with 20 seconds left. He'll dump it into the corner. Here's Mitchell away from Forsberg, and Forsberg always finishes his hits as well. Absolutely. Boy, he had a couple of big hits in game two where he put the shoulder on Kuba and Cliff Ronning. Walls and Forsberg continue to go out. Forsberg a much bigger man. Two seconds left, and that will do it. And the horn sounds. Ending period number one. The Wild got off to a great start. But after that, it was the avalanche. Minnesota finally outshot Colorado in the first period. But the Avs have the lead. 1-0 after one.
What's good? Sam? Subway's new Italian herb and cheese. The taste will bring you to your knees. Great bread makes a sandwich a true taste delight. You'll see for yourself with just one bite. Subway, eat fresh! advertising the refreshing taste of 7-Up? Getting people to sit still for your commercials. Come on. Breathe. Well, problem solved. Here you go, sir. Enjoy yourself. I'm just making sure you watch the whole thing. Pay attention. Here you go. Can't have it. Welcome aboard. Please turn off all unapproved electronic devices. We have a very crowded flight today, and all overhead space is full. The captain expects frequent turbulence, so please remain seated at all times. And we do anticipate a late arrival. Thank you. The Hyundai Santa Fe, with America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. When you upgrade your travel plans, you win. Somewhere between exits 45 and 50, an order was canceled. Somewhere between a hose and a radiator, there was trouble. Somewhere between noon and 2.30, there was a change of plans. And somewhere between where you are and where you're going, there's a Super 8. See you along the way. Welcome to the Dodge Intermission Report. Pat Boyle, Ray Ferrara back in our NHL tonight studios. Uh, the Avs have a 1-0 lead over the Wild. Five games in all, Ray, tonight. Four of those series tied at a game apiece, including the Leafs and the Flyers from the ACC, where Masters champ Mike Weir was on hand to uh, drop the first puck. I thought he was a, a Red Wings fan, right? No, no, right from Ontario. Good old Toronto boy right there. Great tournament win for Mike Weir. That's Eric Weinrich beating Eddie the Eagle there, putting the Flyers up 1-0, and Ray Eric Desjardins comes right back. The Leafs had a, a tough time picking up the defenseman in the first period. Both Flyer goals from defensemen coming in late, 2-0 for Philadelphia. Back comes Toronto, Brian McKay with an interesting mohawk. Takes the shot, Robert Reichel puts it home. He's having a heck of a game. It was 2-1 after one, then Reichel, perfect pass there, fakes the shot over to Caberlet, the equalizer. Check Monik had no chance on that one, Ray. No, nice play. Two points for Reichel. Three of the four goals scored by defensemen in this game. All right, how about game three, Senators and the Islanders. This one also tied at a game apiece. It's Gar Snow trying to get the Isles a win on the island. First period, Patrick Laleem thought he had it there, but watch here, around the left side, Yashin comes sneaking around and he knocks it in. So Yashin gets credit for the goal. Kavashin got it and assist. Later on, a two-man advantage, Todd White. It's the puck in front, he wrists it in. Ties things up at ones, but Ray, here comes Yashin again. Yeah, Yashin catches the Ottawa defense too far apart. Randy Robitaille you shoots it. You see Laleem check behind him. He lost his angle. A little bit of a bad goal for Laleem, but the Islanders have played with a lot of energy early in this game. You surprised with the way the Islanders have played in this series thus far? Not so much by the Islanders. I'm surprised that the Senators haven't been able to match the Islanders' energy. We'll keep an eye on that one, as I said. Four early games, including the one you are watching where Alex Tangay's 14th career playoff goal has the avalanche on top of the wild, 1-0. We're back with more after this. This intermission report, presented by Dodge, the official road team of the NHL. Grab life by the horns, Dodge. Hey, that thing got a hammy? Yeah. Sweet. The all new Dodge Ram Heavy Duty. Did you mean the Charger? Because you know that's got a Hemi too. <laughs> now with a 345 horsepower, 5.7 liter Hemi Magnum. 
Ram Heavy Duty. Enough muscle to grab Motor Trend's 2003 Truck of the Year award. All the rappers coming out now look up to him. Y'all got fun? Makes me want to run. I ain't having no fun. I feel like I'm a hot dog and y'all be the fun. He's dope. I'm damn. Malibu's Most Wanted. Rated PG-13. Starts this Friday. The Home Depot is more than a store. It's an exterior decorator for your backyard. A place full of ideas and deals to get fired up about. Because right now you'll get free propane and assembly when you buy any gas grill of 119 or more. And if it's a Sharp Royal gas grill, you'll also get a free tool set with manufacturer's mail-in rebate. As always, it's the guaranteed low price every day on everything you need to create your own backyard vacation. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. So if I ran an online trading company, here's the way it would work. You'd make your trade, you pay the fee, a standard fee. No order handling fees or share limitations. I guess I'd run it like a marriage trade. At Ameritrade, every online equity trade is $10.99, including stop and limit orders. No handling fees, no share limits, no gimmicks. Ameritrade, what's your share? Open an account at Ameritrade.com today and get 25 commission-free internet equity trades. And you could be trading the same day you apply. Sure, all these OTC and prescription allergy medicines are approved for pollen, but some are not approved for pet dander and dust. Others are not approved for smoke. Only Flonase is approved to relieve the nasal symptoms from all these triggers. For best results, use daily. Side effects are generally mild and may include headache, nosebleed, and sore throat. Ask your doctor about Flonase. For all these triggers, all it takes is Flonase. The players. The experts. His track record is pretty flawless. The definitive source for everything baseball. Catch all the scores and highlights from around the league. Baseball tonight. All season long on ESPN and ESPN2. Welcome back to the Dodge Intermission Report. Pat Boyle and Ray Farrar back in our studios. It's becoming a habit for the defending Stanley Cup champs. Down two games to none for the second straight year. Game three at the pond tonight, 10.30 Eastern. You can see that one on ESPN2. Last year they were able to come back against Dan Cloutier and the Canucks, but will they be able to do it against J.S. Giguere, who's been just tremendous in this one, Ray? He stopped 97 of 100 shots. It's just been incredible as we take a look at some of the numbers from the first two games in this series. Total domination between the pipes for the Ducks. The Wings haven't played that bad other than the not score. No, they haven't played that badly at all. You see that bottom line right there, Fedorov, Hull, and Eiserman, zero goals on 20 shots. It's not so much Eiserman. His, his health issues have made him less of a scoring presence in the past. Fedorov and Hull have to get something done offensively. But what the Red Wings have talked about in the day between games two and three is trying to crowd J.S. Jaguar a little bit more, get a little more traffic to the front of the net. They feel that there are some rebounds available that the Ducks have cleared away and they have not got to. If they want to score on Jaguar, he's seeing the puck too cleanly. They need guys in front of them. When there is a rebound, they need to crash the net hard, make it difficult for him to cover anything around the front of the net. Plenty of guys in that Red Wings room that uh, have some cup experience, but one of those guys that doesn't have that as Curtis Joseph. What's going through his mind right now? Are the veterans kind of letting him just kind of stay to himself and be on an island? Because he's got to think. I mean, he let two soft goals in in the last game, goals one and three. Well, I don't think anybody's saying too much to Curtis Joseph. He's obviously a veteran goaltender that was brought to the Red Wings from the Maple Leafs as a free agent to replace Dominic Hasek. He's brought there for the express purpose of winning the Stanley Cup. He has not played all season long anywhere up to the caliber of play that we're accustomed to seeing of Curtis Joseph. Quite simply, as the Red Wings have had lots of chances on Jaguar, this series has come down to goaltending. The the Anaheim Mighty Ducks are getting it. The Detroit Red Wings are not. And going into the series, I don't think anybody would have thought that Jaguar would outplay Joseph as badly as he has. Well, we'll see what happens tonight. 10.30 Eastern on ESPN2 as the Wings and the Ducks go at it again from the pond this time. We're through 20 minutes in Minnesota. Alex Tangay, the lone goal scorer on a miscue by Dwayne Rollison. We're back with more after this. Play ball. Everyone. Eight, nine, Sports. Well, it's really good. 
You were so cute when you met my dad for the first time. Oh, he's he's real big. He's like six six, and he's got a beard. He looks like Abe Lincoln. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I need to go to the men's room. You want to come with me? Sure. Your hair looks great tonight. Thanks. Just got it done. Did you bring a comb? Oh yeah, of course. You're not a woman. Why use a woman shampoo? Try new Suave for Men Deep Cleaning Shampoo. Get your hair just as clean as her brand for half the price. New Suave for Men. Tomorrow's special is going to be vegetarian lasagna. But since spaghetti with marinara sauce was served today, the staff did not feel it was appropriate to have two Italian dishes in a row. Therefore, the new special is shepherd's pie. And lentil soup. His first pictures were supposed to be in his mother's arms. His first months, not such a worry. It's no one's fault. We did everything right. Still, our son was born almost three months early. And no one knows why. I just wish someone could tell me why. Insight Media Advertising has an immediate opening for a full-time shooter editor in our Lafayette, Indiana office. Responsibilities include, but are not limited to, providing production support for on-site and studio commercials. Basic videography and non-linear editing skills are required. Knowledge of current production trends and related computer software is helpful. Insight Media Advertising offers competitive salary and excellent benefits. No phone calls. Please apply to Insight Media Advertising, Anderson, Indiana. Welcome back to our Dodge Intermission Report, everyone. ESPN2, your place for all your Stanley Cup needs tonight after the Wings-Ducks game. Barry Melrose will join Ray Ferraro and myself. We'll recap the five game threes tonight. Barry will break down that Wings game, and Ray will talk about one of his old teams, the Islanders, as they take on the Sens in game three of that series. Dwayne Rolison made seven saves in the first period, but one miscue led to the only goal thus far. It's 1-0 Avs. Steve Levy, Darren Payne have your second period coming up next. This intermission report presented by Dodge, the official road team of the NHL. Grab life by the horns. Dodge. Here we go. This is a war, and we are soldiers. There is only one way to save our city. Neo. What if the prophecy is true? What if tomorrow the war could be over? Isn't that worth fighting for? Isn't that worth dying for? The Matrix Reloaded, rated R, starts Thursday, May 15th. your cravings with Taco Bell's Cheesy Gordita Crunch. Mmm, crunchy. Warm, pillowy flatbread. Mmm, chewy. Covered in three melted cheeses. Cheesy. All wrapped around a crunchy taco and topped with a zesty pepper jack sauce. Empty. To get the Cheesy Gordita Crunch, think outside the bun. Syracuse fans, the orange is number one. Now, Sports Illustrated honors the national champion Syracuse Orangemen with a fantastic national championship package free with your paid subscription. Start out with a special Sports Illustrated national championship hardbound collector's issue celebrating the orange's run to number one. It's gold lettered and individually numbered, a cherished keepsake you'll treasure forever. Call now and you'll also get this collectible mini basketball designed exclusively for Sports Illustrated in celebration of Syracuse's first national championship. 
Both are free when you order 56 issues of Sports Illustrated for only $1.59 an issue. Save more than 50% off the cover price. When you use your credit card, you'll get another great gift available only from Sports Illustrated. This Syracuse National Championship hat, free. Celebrate the number one team in the nation with three great gifts from the nation's number one sports magazine. Sports Illustrated. Call now. Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN2 brought to you by Microsoft, providing software for the agile business. Dodge, the official road team of the NHL, grab life by the horns. Dodge and MCI bringing voice and data solutions together on one global network. One of the many unique features, they call it the fishing lodge, it's down at the first level here at the XL Energy Center. Fans are going to go in there and wear two flags and enjoy themselves and then hopefully they'll come out and enjoy second period action with us. Steve Levy alongside Darren Pang. Uh, history in the making here, really a, a special atmosphere to start. And Minnesota really got off to the start they wanted, had the first three shots on goal in the game, and dominated the first couple of minutes. Right off the hop, they did what they wanted to do, put pressure on Colorado, put some pressure on Patrick Waugh, who made three or four sterling saves to begin it, but then the balloon burst with the key first goal of the game. Dwayne Rollison earlier on, his first time handling the puck, he fanned on a backhander, then double clutched on the second one. The next time the puck came down, he tried to go to the forehand. Uh-oh, he can't get the puck over Peter Forsberg, who plays the puck to the middle of the ice. Alex Tangay ends up scoring his first goal of the series and 14th career playoff goal. So I'm sure that they're talking to Rollison about handling that puck and being a little bit more conservative. You wonder if that's nerves or if that would have happened in the middle of the season against Nashville. Yeah, I, yeah, I wouldn't think it would be nerves. I, I would think that, but I would say that if he played the first one with more confidence, that might have helped out the second one. Second period is underway. Wild trying to get to it, turned it right over to Battaglia. Two on two along the wall now. Work free right in front. Rollison stick it aside. Marshall will get to it for Minnesota. And slap it around the board. And players continue to scrap in the corner. 29 seconds in. That's one of the reasons why the Avalanche went out and got Bates Battaglia. They gave up a fine player in Redeem Verbata. A highly skilled player that could be a top six guy, but right now they need a little bit more grit. Danny Hynote's also out on the ice on that line. Bataglia, Sakic, and Hynote. As we listen to the call. Both players, two minutes seed dropping. Faceoff stays inside. Not a bad call by Schick to get them both out on the both get them both in the box after the scrum in the corner to the right of Dwayne Rollison. And there's High Note. He took a little stick in the midsection, finishes off his check. Good play there. And that's on Kuba. Kuba got drilled in game two in that same corner by Peter Forsberg in Denver. And there we see them, both guys battling down low. I like the fact High Note, High Note playing a lot more with Sackick and Bataglia and Ryan Preck centering the, the next line. What a hit by Forsberg. I know the Foot able to keep it. Thanks for the four check by Forsberg on Schultz. Mitchell on Forsberg there. I like the call by Schick Pang. He gave us the extra added bonus of telling us the faceoff would stay inside the zone. Yep. For a bonus info. Here's Walls. He's got a goal in each game. As we hit game three of the series, Colorado the one other lead. Walls trying to touch it back to Schultz. And Schultz gets to it, but out of the zone. The shots, we told you that Minnesota had an advantage after the first period. Well, they have changed that now. Shots officially were 8 7 Colorado after the first period. Heinold and Kuba roughing at 24 seconds. More four on four. Third time already tonight we'll play four on four. Oh, what a wide open hockey. DeVries is wide open and in. Seven in front. And it was tipped aside. Boy, what a good give and go, Steve, by Joe Sackick. He's really got some jump going. He's had plenty of good scoring chances. Tange, they're ahead of the play. Sackick was just offside. Greg DeVries, five goals in his last 23 playoff games. He had zero in his first 66 and had a chance here. Yeah, here's that play by Joe, though. Joe makes the play happen by gaining the line. He backs everybody off, and DeVries jumps in on the play. Smart play by DeVries. I mentioned Sackick. 
has been getting more chance. I don't mean in this particular game, but he had five shots in game one. He had two shots in game two, and he's winning an average of 52% of his face-offs. We're seeing some good Joe. Speaking of face-offs, Wes Walls did a number on Peter Forsberg on face-offs in that first period. Walls won seven of eight. Yikes. Back behind the net. Rollison, no problem handling that one. And it leads to this. Pasquale Dupree. Checked from behind by Ron Preck, who doesn't have a stick. Wrapped around the boards and all the way out. Fortunate Karam from Minnesota. They were on a change. But Taglia would have had a step and would have been in across the line. And Sekarash will go back for it. Again, though, Bataglia finishes his check. You know, he doesn't skate by guys. He doesn't just give them the flyby. He hits them after they've released the puck. And over the course of a long series and a long postseason, that certainly has a wear and tear effect. Here's Park behind the net. Foot on him. Back to the point. Wow, good play, I believe, by Mitchell just to keep it in as he was losing his balance and going down to the ice. It was Mitchell. Hall took the man, and that allowed the puck to skip by Sekarash. With speed, here's Hendrickson now and across the line. On the back end, the Minnesota native Darby Hendrickson trying to shovel it back to the corner, but Heino got to it. Fresh from the penalty box. And we're five aside. Here's Riku Hall. Hall will drop. Wilson got the shot away. It was blocked out the defense. Here's Nick Schultz rushing up the ice. His backhand goes off the ski to Forsberg and right to Skula, and they'll settle things down with Marchman. Well, Schultz is impressive. It looks like he's a 10-year veteran on the ice. What an experience for this 20-year-old. Tangay off the skate of Walls, but Tangay skating hard, able to get puck possession back. Back behind the net where Forsberg most dangerous. Good check throw there. Hayduk tried to reach for it and couldn't get to it, and the play continues behind the net as Forsberg and Zuzin were still tied up. And the Wild get to it. Cross ice pass. Kuba Feather Sekaras fanned on it, had a good lane to shoot, and had his stick partially lifted by Forsberg. Roxon will keep it in deeper. That stick to the right of Wah has been on the ice for it seems like three minutes. There's the stick right there. You can see it in your picture. Blake gets a second crack at it. Messier checks his man. Keen had the puck. And it's sent softly into the Colorado end. Blake will get to it away from Zoltan. Kept in at the point, though. Sekarash held, then passed it around the boards. Schooler rubs his man out. Zoltan, the blind pass, goes all the way to the corner. Why able to kick out the angle drive by Sekarash. And it comes up the near side. And out to center, here's Mike Keene. I hope he's scratching game one. He's back for two and three. Sackett lets it go. And a stick save by Rollison. Here's Sekarash. The Wild trying to break Brian's chin down. Three on two as they hit the line. And that shot goes wide of the net. And the Avs will look to transition a little bit. Defense to offense. Shanks trying to skip in. Willie Mitchell rubbed him out. And the Wild looked to break back pass too far. Marchman able to get it away from Stevenson. And the Az go cross ice. Pataglia gloves it down. They're ahead of the play and offside. Let's go back to Peter Forsberg's last shift behind the net. And Peter's getting involved here as he did in, in game number two physically. Behind the net, he tries to set up shot. Good defensive play by Zuzan. The stick of Forsberg between his legs. Forsberg takes a little retaliatory move right here. And with the referee right there, I'm very surprised that he didn't get a call. I, I mean, he gave him a, a good shove and a good, good one after that with the right paw, but no call. And uh, I think he was fortunate. I think the coaching staff will say, just calm her down on those plays when the referee's a half a yard from you. Right. You know, we don't want you in the penalty box. We need you on the ice at even strength. Hanger, if I'm a, an opposing coach, Peter Forsberg, I, I'm, I'm telling everybody, take the shot because Forsberg will hit you back. And if you're in Minnesota, it doesn't matter who goes off the ice with Forsberg. That's a good trade for the Wild. There's not one player in which that would be a bad trade for Minnesota. And Forsberg, for whatever reason, can't stay away from the, yeah. the retaliatory shot. That's part of what makes him great. But you wonder if that'll hurt him throughout the playoffs. For Taglia. Trying to force it deep and does. Schultz will go back for him, take his time. 
as Colorado's going for a change. Tough pass for Joltak to handle, put it in his skates. Minnesota, all sorts of problems. Can't even get out of his own. Wilson let it go. Rocked by Joltak. Turn around, shot. Paul was there coming late and just barely missed it. I like the way Colorado's playing. Defensively, they're keeping Minnesota to the outside. And now offensively, they're really making a lot of, a lot of good decisions with the puck. Marsh and feathered it through nicely for Wilson. Abs try to cycle it down deep. High note for Hall. Susan gets to it, wraps it around. And Minnesota, maybe for the first time all game, really looking disorganized. Icing is called. one nothing, Colorado. Register five. Hey, we're out of... No, we're not. It's like I think it, and it happens. Yeah. Yeah. .NET Connected Software helps you connect your supply chain. That's software for the Agile business from Microsoft. Working. Oh, break, 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 break. The Dodge SXTs. Four cool cars. And you won't have to work two jobs just to buy one. Don, you made it! I like your hat. <laughs> Grab Dodge's 770 powertrain limited warranty. Four Chevy and Toyota don't match it. From now on. Long distance, local, and high speed internet will be together. Voice and data networks for companies large and small will be together. The innovations of one of the world's largest internet providers and the simplicity of one global network will be together. Together, under one name MCI. The winningest coach in hockey history is in the house tonight. There's Scotty Bowman on your left. Danny Belial on your right. Both scouts for the Detroit Red Wings in attendance. Maybe thinking about the second round. I think the Red Wings are going to have to win a game in that series for us before we start thinking about a second round. Down 2 0 to Anaheim. Game three coming up after our game tonight on ESPN2. And those of you that are watching tonight in Minnesota or might catch this on the re air, the only place to see this in the Minnesota area game four on Wednesday night will be right here on ESPN2. Let's send it back to the studio, Pat Boyle. Steve, a wild one between the Leafs and the Flyers. 2 2. Time winding down in the second period. Alexander Mogillon, and what a series he's having. His fifth goal in the series. Roman Chekmonic, probably the big question mark for the Flyers. Has that one go by his shoulder? 3 2. And you can keep up with all the action of every NHL game. Steve, with NHL Gamecast, go to NHL.com and ESPN.com. You can? You can keep up with the you, action over you, you have to be able to connect your darn laptop computer. Uh, to I that see. Service. We're still working on that, Steve. Yeah. We're working on that. If the hotel doesn't have the high speed peg, I'm, I'm you still have, in trouble. You yeah. have no chance whatsoever. Thank but a you. lot of other people can. Right. Thank you. Roll us in. Stick it to the corner. I like the Forsberg. He's everywhere, Peter Forsberg. Just got a pretty good whack on Philippe Kuba. And then Forsberg initiated some more contact. Yeah, but Wes Walsh was braced for that. And Wes Walsh actually got his stick there, too. Here's Walsh. Drop pass. Straddle the line momentarily. Locks it in towards the net. Scooped at by Wah. And players come together in front of that Colorado net. All the little things that the Minnesota Wild do well. Patrick Wah seeing his teammates do well. Sticks in the lanes. Bodies there. They're not getting clean shots on Patrick Wah. Other than the first five or six minutes of the game, that draw pass was just inside. There's Lauksen in. There's, and there's the stick blade of Forsberg. He gets that on there. It deflected off his blade. And here's at the other end. Forsberg's going to challenge Wes Walls. Watch him. Boom. Wes Walls got great for that one. He was ready for it. Unlike a lot of players, when they go head-to-head -head with Peter Forsberg, he's the guy that ends up standing up. Loose puck still inside the Colorado end. And Wah will get to it. Wah has some problems with it. And it's back to the point. Colorado able to clear, didn't go back all the way to the point, into the second row of the stands. And we get a whistle. Well, in game number two, Peter Forsberg, he is great at, at protecting the puck and then throwing his shoulder as Kuba found out. 
Then in front of the net, he was going there as well. But the biggest hit of the night for Peter Forsberg was the one on Cliff Ronnie. And he gave Cliff Ronning the shoulder right in the neutral zone after Ronning was looking for the puck and Peter braced himself and just drilled the little veteran. Here's Skula. Cross ice passes, glove down. Here's Zuzan trying to lead the break. Good back check by Reinbrecht. Got it off of him to slow down the play. Wrapped around the board by Skula. Hall got a piece. And it's cleared all the way down to the Minnesota end. Pasquale Dupuis is on it. Dupuis hit by Keane. And it's picked off at center. Here's Pierre Marc Bouchard. Shoots in softly. Wah away from Dupuis. And actually put it out of play. We send it back to Pat Boy. All right, game three, Senators and the Islanders. 2-1 Isles. As the Sens get a break here, puck goes off the lines of Brian Smolinski over to Chris Phillips, his second career postseason goal. It's 2-2 after two. Well, that's a good give and go right there. How about the defenseman Phillips driving hard to the net? I love those give and goes. There's yeah. no one better than Curry and Gretzky at that. That's outmanning two on one in the opposition is the best way to create offense. As we see right here, shots on goal. Nine apiece so far in this hockey game. That's it. And this has really settled in and settled down into a playoff game. All the pomp and circumstance to begin this game was simply incredible. As the play is allowed to continue in. Two on two in the corner. And who's coming out but Heino? Good poke check though, Steve. That was Dwayne Rollison's stick. Sweeping it around the net to knock him off balance. Off for Dowd. Able to knock it down in the mid air. Center to cross. And Blake got there just in time. Here's Brunette back behind the net. Shot. Tipped in front. Loose puck. Still loose. And the ads are going to get to it and clear. A lace for the puck. Rollison's way out. And he's able to clear there. Shot right back in by Sackett. They're way offside as Messier was coming out of the zone. Tomorrow night, ESPN and ESPN2 bring you a full night of Stanley Cup playoff action at 7 Eastern on ESPN. The Devils will look to sweep the Boston Bruins. Here on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern, the Lightning and Capitals, they shift to Washington. And the Stars and the Oilers from Edmonton will follow that one here on ESPN2. Three games on both networks. Well, Coach Tony Granato of the Colorado Avalanche has got Joe Sackett on there. The last shift with Eric Messi on the left and Danny Hynote on the right. He's getting his captain. Little extra ice time there. Give himself a little bit of cushion, knowing that the Wild would definitely change their plan of attack. If they're down 2 nothing, they would have to start pressing in their own building. And when you press, you end up giving up odd man breaks. Here's Susan. Long shot right on. Wah made the save. This is another one of those challenges for Tony Granato, already now through his first two playoff games, but first playoff game as a head coach on the road, which is certainly a different difference maker in terms of matchups. You, you learn. I mean, what did Jacques Lemaire even say in 95 when he was faced up against the great Scotty Bowman? He, he learned every single game. Right. He also said, hey, how many goals is uh, Tony Granato going to score in this series? That None, neither am I. <laughs> Marshall will shoot it around. Wah wow, partially fan on his clearing attempt. Tangent turns it over to Ronnie. Here's Walls trying to give it back. Wall shot. Oh, what a save. And the rebound is stopped as well. Wes Walls had a golden opportunity to score. And Wah will make the stop. And then a second one as well. There's your best scoring chance so far for Minnesota. And the crowd rolls as Forsberg is buried back behind the Minnesota net. Kubel will get to it. Leaves for Marion Gaberick. Gaberick is checked as he releases. Here's Mitchell. He'll shoot it just wide of the net. Forsberg hacked at by Roxon and nearly turned it over. Gaberick couldn't get out of his skates. Forsberg's a magician with the puck at center. It finds Hall. In his shot deflected into the net. Oh, and we're going to step out, but not before taking another look at the future Hall of Famer, Patrick Waugh. He comes up with his two best. This one on Ronnie to tie the game. ESPN HD. Sponsored by Phillips and Best Buy. Here it is. Actual ice from the Boston Guard. Oh, let me smell that. 
Nice. How much? 200 bucks. It's an investment. Oh, yeah. Ooh, game's on. Oh, Ooh, let's go. You know, they won the cup on that. Are you paying too much for shipping? Priority mail service is dependable delivery starting at just $385. Maybe that's why we deliver more business packages than any two-day service. Priority Mail from the United States Postal Service. Oh, great look from a reverse angle here. Walls gets it right on the doorstep, right in the middle of the net. Patrick Wall makes a brilliant save, leaning back with the paddle of his stick. I think we're going to get another look at that one. Oh. And maybe right now, into the netting, we get the whistle. Well, wow. We'll, we'll, we'll bring you right to the inside of the net and see what the Southwest Airlines goal cam's looking at. First, it's to the left because it's a pass that gets nullified. Oh. Then he's got to reach to the right, and he gets it right on the coho, the shaft of the big fat paddle of the goal stick from Patrick Wall. Look at the react from West Walls. Oh. oh, he can't believe he didn't score. And no, Wes, it did not go in, and it's not like Wes feathered that in. Right. He got pretty good mustard on that little snapper. And, and he probably can't believe not only he not put it in, that Ronning didn't put it in either Yeah, on the rebound. Well, he got better wood on it than Ronnie. Yeah. Ronnie barely got anything on it. And that's why Patrick Wall was able to get his paddle down and stop the second one on the rat. Cliff Ronnie. Oh, boy. That's some great stuff. I mean, that's what separates the average guy from the guy heading to the Hall of Fame time and time again, making the big one. See, Walsh was trying to make a reverse pass to Lauksen in. Oh. And it came right back to him. Oh, this save's going to get better and better as we go along. That is something else. Oh, what I liked about Wah on the Ronning miss is he has to kick that one away right off the faceoff is you can see his glove was up in the air expecting Ronnie to lift it. And if Ronnie would have lifted it, Wah might have made the yep. stop also. Well, that's your reaction. Trap it. Kind of take an angle so you can smother it. Move it. Move it. Well, clearly Minnesota seems to have gotten some life just from the two scoring chances, even though they haven't wiped out the goose egg. Here's Dupuis trying to put it in front. Loose puck turnaround shot is blocked by the breeze and a penalty. Coming up, Pierre Marc Bouchard was taken down, and I think Chance is going to go. Well, Bouchard is having a very strong game here, his first ever playoff game. Chance didn't play in the last game. Oban's not playing this one. Colorado, two minutes. Bouchard only played three minutes and 37 seconds of the opening period. But the 18-year-old that wears number 96 is a tribute to his favorite players, Mario Lemieux and Wayne Gretzky. He's got some nifty little moves, boy, and he gets taken out here on the right side of your screen. Shantz just did a great job, I thought. I thought that was a good defensive play by Jeff Shantz, eliminating Bouchard from getting that puck. Uh, he eliminated him okay. He interfered at 11.52. Third Minnesota power play coming up while they work on the ice in the crease of Patrick Waugh. You look at the crowd of 19,354, a new record, the largest crowd ever to see a hockey game in the state of Minnesota. Here's the guy to look for, Cliff Ronning at the point of the power play. He's the forward back there with Susan. Minnesota will have to set it up now. Here's Gavin. He's been very quiet tonight and really quiet for the series with so much expected out of the young budding superstar. He does have a goal and scored a goal in game number one of the series, but we have yet to see the spectacular, which we expect out of him. Here's Ronning and a cross line. Whacked out a good two-hander by Keen. You probably can hear it in your living room thanks to the outstanding ESPN2 audio on the ice. Back to the point. Susan's got a lane. Let's it go. Saved by Law. Gabrick left it down in a 
shot was blocked. Blake's all over Gabbert. Keen will get there. Brunette on him. Gabbert's got away now. Gets some time. Back to the point. Ronnie lets it go. Shot is blocked. Zuzan will settle it down. Ronnie will settle it down. Here's Brunette. Off for Gabbert. Gabbert. Brunette. Side of the net. Goes to the front. Shot is stopped. Brunette is tackled. And they get the whistle even though the puck was still loose. Oh, boy. 57 seconds left in the power. Schick's going to make this face-off outside, but Burnett didn't have the puck underneath him. I think that's why Burnett's looking for an explanation from the referee. Oh, good, solid puck movement here. Burnett pays the price to make a play. He knew he was going to get smoked. See the puck line there? He puts his arm over it for a second, but then it's loose. Referee can't see it, so he thinks he's smothered it up. Here's the earlier chance. Zuzan's blast. Good save by Patrick Waugh. Gabrick on the doorstep. Rob Blake, solid defensive play. Blake didn't get sucked in by the puck. He just took out the man. As you see, the scoring chance is 8-1 to one in favor of the Wild in this period. Marion Gabrick led Minnesota in just about every offensive category except power play goals. Andrew Brunette led the way with nine power play goals. He had a power play goal in game number two and nearly had a power play goal there. And he leads them in points here. I know the goal, he's got two points so far with the man advantage. Still 35 seconds left in it. Long shot from Marshall. Nearly took Stevenson's head off his teammate in front of the net. Whacked at. There's Kube able to hold it. Nice play. Gets it to Marshall. He feeds Mark Bouchard. Set down low now. Here's Pierre Mark Bouchard again getting his first taste of playoff action. Let's it go. Stopped by Wa and another quick whistle as Stevenson is shut there by Morris. Morris. Morris put a stick into him as well. He's got to be careful, Steve. He put that stick right in the midsection, and Morris has been quietly terrific on the blue line for this hockey club. Played 24 and a half minutes of game two, was a plus one. And there, he took that stick. You're right, Steve. He just put it right in the midsection and jammed him. And Pascal Dupuis was also behind the net. And good physical battle in front, looking for a rebound on the short side shot there from Bouchard. Here's a shot from Marshall. Went off one helmet here. Point, point. Oh, gee, wow. holy smoke. See that? Patrick was the last guy to see it, and the, all he could do is shrug those shoulders as it went over the net. The crowd roaring. What's going on? I don't know. Dowd set to take the draw against Keane. Keane's going to get tossed out, and it's pretty good if you can put Joe Sackick in there. Yeah, not a bad replacement. 11 seconds left. Wild actually able to win the draw, though. Park will shoot it around the boards. Foot gets to a far side. Keen gets the check. And Park took his eye off. Here's Sackett breaking the other way. Sackett now at even strength with five on five. Oh, go and he scores! Joe Sackett with the signature wrist shot goal. And it's 2 0 Colorado. All starts with the veteran Mike Keen, though. You talk about making a hit. Usually it's take a hit to make a play, but there he does it on the far boards and it allows Joe Sackett to be sprung loose. Foot played it there, and Keane was actually rather lucky. He jumped up in the air, which you can't do. The Sackett then pulls it into the strong side against the green, and I'm going to tell you something. As we see it from our Southwest Airlines goal cam, the left side of your screen, it is the most difficult save for a goalie to make because you're going down one angle, you cut into the middle, and then you go the same way against the grain. Very tough save to make. That goal by Sackett comes on Colorado. Only their second shot of the period. Sackett unassisted. His second of the playoffs at 13.58. It was all Minnesota. Most of it on the power play the great scoring chances three of them officially scoring chances and then as soon as the man comes out of the box Sackick able to get the goal and the 2-0 Colorado lead some sloppy play again in that Minnesota and Walls is without a stick again Colorado able to get to it Minnesota needs a clear desperately won't get one right now but Taglia and Schultz go to the glass Wilsey trying to get there DeVries stepped up and it's poked out to center well, Minnesota has to maintain the will and the hunger and the enthusiasm because they have had some some kind of chances this period. Here's Tangay from Blake tried to give and go. 
And it's softly into the corner. Schultz will get to it off the glass. And out of the zone. Now you want a turn of events. That's saved by Patrick Law and West Wall. That, that makes it 1-1. They turn around and they make it 2-0. That's the turning point of the game so far. Here's Puck. High note on him. Wild get to it. Got to be frustrating for Minnesota. They played pretty well. Nothing to show for it. Thanks to the legendary Patrick Law. Centering feed. And Puck got the shot away on the outside of the post. Wah was hugging the iron. Here's Ronning now. Can't do much with it. And turned over to Hall. Hall will backhand. Sekarash for Minnesota. 4-10 to play here in the second. 2-0 Colorado. Winner of tonight's game three takes a 2-1 series lead. Game four back here. Wednesday night. 6.30 local time. 7.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Those of you in Minnesota, the only place you'll be able to watch Game 4 on Wednesday night is right here on ESPN2 exclusively. Ads moving ahead. Backhanded softly into the Minnesota end now. Sakagon before check of the wild will just fire it right back out. Well, you can see the change in momentum. Every time Colorado scores the wild all of a sudden, look totally out of their own element. Here's Battaglia. Hits the brakes, looks for some help. They'll shoot it around the board. Deeper sack, it can't get there. Kuba does for Minnesota. Loose puck, Brunette can't get a stick on it, and it's clear. Foot, back for the touch. Haven't had a whole lot of icing calls in the game. Everybody appreciates that. Joe Sackick has the goal. The captain of the Avs making it 2 nothing. Good job, man. Rusty, we're trying to get home. Introducing the Dodge SRT series. Race inspired, street legal. Sweet. Jessen. So close, within a hair, but not quite there. The hair stays for April Savings Day. Right now, get savings up to 10 grand or financing as low as zero APR on Toyota, Honda, Jeep, Lincoln, Mercury, Subaru, Mitsubishi, Hyundai, and more. If you're in the market for a new car, the Bob Romanalo Group is here for you. There's only one, Bob Roman. The Bob Romanalo Group, Sagamore Parkway, Teal Road, Creasy Lane, Lafayette. Three minutes, eight seconds away from the Southwest Airlines Intermission Report. Pat Boyle and Ray Ferraro have all the latest highlights of the other playoff games going on in a preview of the Mighty Ducks and Red Wings coming up immediately following our game tonight here on ESPN2. And the preview is coming up on the Southwest Airlines Intermission Report. Quick shot and stop. By Rollison and able to hang on. The series all even at a game apiece. And the Avalanche looking to take a two games to one lead with a two nothing lead here tonight. Well, Marion Gabrick is also is, is obviously a very young hockey player at 21 that has great offensive ability. 30 goals this year. But right now, and it's unfair to do so when you play a team concept, they have not relied on one player really all year long. And they want Marion Gabbert to be a very good player on a great team, not a great player on a bad team. But uh, the pressure does fall on a player like that because of his natural ability to break a game open, and they need that. Here's Wall. Nice move around foot, but Forsberg came over to hit Wall. DeVries put the lumber on Walls as well. I think the Avalanche are picking on poor West Walls. Well, he gives it back. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me when I say that. Here's Hayden trying to set a stop play. Where is it? Loose, and it's cleared. Penalty coming up. There's a pile-up 
still the Minnesota crease. It's a delayed penalty. Oh, I thought it was on Forsberg, but it's going to be on Kuba. And they have had a battle. We showed you what happened in game two between Kuba and Peter Forsberg. And this big fella continues to impress with hey, his physical play. Right there. And he's calling interference. Kuba's under contract to 2005, 2006. And he's averaging 26 minutes a game. What a find he has been. But right now, as we take a look at Mario Trombley, the assistant coach that runs the backside, the blue line, is looking at Kuba and saying, you got, you can't do that. And the referee's right there, and he grabbed him with the leather stinky mitt to the face. And the referee Walcom had had his arm up. I thought originally it might have been on Forsberg poking, poking while the puck wasn't there on the goaltender. But that's not the case, and Colorado goes on the power play. I, I think looking from Kuba's reaction, he thought the penalty was also on Forsberg. But Kuba, interference 17-53, only Colorado's second power play of the game. And across the line, here's Sack. For Blake, let it rip, missed it on the near side. This could be a difference in the hockey game right here with a minute 45 to go in the second. 2-0 abs. And on the power play. Shot from the angle is stopped by Rollison. And he's able to hang on. One more time, Pat Boyle. All right, Steve, we're getting set for another intermission here, Ray, for our Pat Boyle. And uh, four games going on right now, plenty of entertainment. What do you think of this Patty Wall guy? Patty Wall's pretty good. He made an unbelievable save there. Panger, can you do that? Yeah, thanks, Ray. You have 408 <laughs> goals, and you know I couldn't do that, partner. Ray scored one goal on you. Is that right? 408, yeah. yeah. Oh, how many games? 40, 50 games against you? Probably two. Oh. Two. Pee-wee scored. Don't like that. You played against him in Pee-wee? No, that's his name. Oh. Yeah. I thought Chicken Farm was his nickname. That's his ESPN name. Ah, a man of many nicknames. He and Pat Boyle coming up on the intermission. Here's Morris, let it go, nothing but glass. Back to the point. Blake, able to get it across for Forsberg now. Hayduke in a high slot. Cut down low to Tange. Blake let it go. Head save, rebound loose. What a play by Forsberg from his knees. To at least momentarily get it away from Walls. I think that hit the scoreboard, and that's the reason for the whistle. Make sure you stay with us here on ESPN2 following our game. The defending Stanley Cup champion Red Wings are in a, all sorts of trouble tonight as they try to avoid falling behind three games to none when they take the ice in Anaheim against the Mighty Ducks. John Sebastian, John Sebastian, I'm just going with J.S. Jaguar has stopped 97 of 100 shots in the series so far. He stopped 97% of the shots that have come his way. Or roughly 97. <laughs> right, right around there, yeah. <laughs> shot to the corner. Panger's got the calculator. He's now checking it again. 97 out of 100. Here's Skula on it now. 30 seconds left in the period. Skula upended from behind. Puck trying to break. Puck might have gotten away with one there. And play allowed to continue on. Here's Foot. They're way offside. Not even close. Ryan Precht ahead of the play on the far side. 16.2 seconds left. Well, we, with 16.2 seconds left, we've got time to go back to that save. I mean, it's a 1-0 hockey game, and you cannot overemphasize how important key saves are, momentum-stopping saves are, as we say, the most wins in the season and the playoffs for Patrick Waugh. Amazing. <laughs> Nearly 200 more wins than his closest competitor on that list. 16 seconds left. With well, any luck, we'll get another whistle. One second left in the power play. That's over. Seven seconds left in the period. Here's Heidel. Softly around. And that will do it. The horn will sound. Ending period number two. So now we have time to slide over to that. The Wild have the slight advantage by two when it comes to shots on goal. But the Avalanche, the 2 0 lead. Patrick Watt, credible save. West Walls thought he had one. Two periods complete for Mitty. Hey! That thing got a Hemi, right? Yeah! Well, now I got a Hemi, too. But I got something you don't got. Check this out. Dodge Ram 1500. The 
Enemy Legend continues. Hit it! Grab Dodge's 770 powertrain limited warranty. Ford, Chevy, and Toyota don't match it. What you save on Armada's weekend rate? Spend on film. Book your own getaway at Ramada.com. <laughs> Ramada, a very good place to be. Lots of accessories. And now the toughest leg of the strongman competition, Norm. The Bud Light Industrial Fridge Pole. Jim, that's 1,000 pounds of pure hernia that they'll try to drag across. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Norm, but it looks like a fan from the stands has stolen the Bud Light. Oh! A huge hit from out of nowhere. And this guy's got the foot speed to take this thing all the way. Oh! With a great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Okay, who's the hero? Make it a Bud Light. A reminder from Ramada. When you turn in your expense report, act tired and try not to smile. Ramada, a very good place to be. How many times have you said you'd do just about anything to get your hair back? Thanks to medical hair restoration, now your wish can come true. I wanted to turn back the, you know, the hands of time. I think it makes a difference in the relationship. If you do something about it. If you do something, yeah. And we did. Call 1-888-384-7356 right now. We'll send you an information package that outlines all the details of this life-changing procedure. So call now. Welcome to the Southwest Airlines Intermission Report. Pat Boyle and Ray Ferrara are back in our ESPN2 studios. Three other games going on right now besides the one you're seeing where it's 2-0 in favor of the Avalanche. All those games right now are tied up. Let's take a look at the first one from the ACC, the Flyers and the Leafs. Uh, looks like that looks pretty good on Mike Weir, huh? That Masters jacket. Yeah. It looks really good. Proud day for Canadians yesterday with Mike Weir and the Masters. Nice day for Robert Reichel as he puts in the loose change. It's 2-1 at that point. Second period, Reichel then fakes the shot. Nice pass over to Thomas Caverlet. More from Toronto. Here's Alexander Mogilny. What's the problem here for Czechmanic, right? Well, Mogilny gets here. Czechmanic's about 6'4". He makes himself small for some reason. Great shot, though, by Mogilny off the post and in. So it's 3-2 Leafs in the third period. Mark Recchi, number 10, John Leclerc doing some house cleaning in front there, helping him out. Leclerc's like a wrecking ball in front of the net. He's pushed over fly, or, uh, Maple Leafs in two consecutive games in front of the net. Recky, the beneficiary of that one. Looks great as he returns after missing almost the entire season. Senators, Islanders tied at a game apiece. Gar Snow trying to get the Islanders on top here. There's the puck. Yashin behind the net, huh? There's a puck over there. Nobody knows where it is. Everybody thinks it's at the side of the net, including Laleem. They still don't know, but it's in the net. Yashin gets the goal. There's one nothing Islanders, but back. On the power play, Todd White gets the equalizer past Snow, and then New York comes right back here. Yash into Randy Robitaille. That was beautiful. Beautiful play. Look at Laleem look behind him. He lost his angle. Robitaille made a nice shot. Here, later on, Smolinski, great pass to Phillips. The Ottawa was the beneficiary of a bounce off the boards. It hit the linesman, Smol so Smolinski could catch up to it. 2-2 two -two after two. We're now in the third. Yash and having a nice effort against his old club. All right, it's 2-0 in favor of the Avalanche. Joe Sackick, his second of the postseason. Some great net minding by Patty Wah. We're back with more after this. This intermission report, presented by Southwest Airlines, the official airline of the National Hockey League. Some people don't realize how many nonstop flights Southwest offers, so we created this simple color-coded map to help. Baltimore to L.A. is red. Phoenix to Raleigh-Durham, blue. Chicago to Seattle, yellow. L.A. to Austin, Canary yellow. Orlando to Albuquerque, teal. Las Vegas to Houston, aquamarine. Buffalo to Phoenix, beige umber. San Jose to Baltimore, pistachio. Oakland to Chicago, sea green. Albany to Orlando, puce. Tampa to St. Louis, pinkish. New Orleans to San Diego, kind of green. You are now free to move about the country. I like this game. 
I don't like to sweat. I use Red Zone because it's the strongest stuff you can get, made just for guys. It absorbs in and helps stop sweat, period. Try it. If you don't like it, Old Spice will buy you a stick of something else. Dude, think about it. Would they guarantee it if it didn't work? Red Zone from Old Spice. but I don't want to pay for it. Right. And you want online banking? Right, if it's free. And unlimited online bill paying? I don't want to have to pay for that either. No, no. 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 So you want total security protection on your check card, free? Look, I just don't think I should have to pay for any of it. Neither do we. Free checking plus, plus, plus with direct deposit from Bank of America. Higher standards. This is Labatt Blue. The clean, crisp lager imported daily from Canada. Its refreshing, honest taste comes from a brewing tradition first established in 1840. Cut, oh, cut. sorry, my bad, my bad. I got carried away a little. Uh, we're gonna need another blue over here. This one's spilled. Can we get another blue, please? Fresh one, please. Cold, like this one. Delicious looking. How you doing? Look up, see blue, Labatt Blue. Ah, uh, better get some more Labatt Blue. You know, just in case. Welcome back to the Southwest Airlines Intermission Report. We're back in our ESPN2 studios. Pat Boyle alongside Ray Farrar. Canucks and Blues, that series also tied at a game apiece. Al McGinnis out with an apparent shoulder injury in this one. A scary situation early on in this one. A 0-0 game as a Daniel Sedin takes a little run here along the boards at Nash. Unbelievable hit by Daniel Sedin. He's not a dirty player. That's got to be five-minute boarding major. They only gave him two. Joel Quenville was losing his mind behind the bench, and he was right on that occasion. Not quite Lemieux on Draper, but, uh, you know, they got to be consistent with calls like that. The referee's job is to protect the players so nobody gets hurt. If he would have been bleeding, he would have given him five minutes. Could have broke his neck. That's a terrible hit. So zip zip right now with a minute to go in the first period. Wings and Ducks, a surprise thus far in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Ducks with a 2 0 lead. Paul Correa with that overtime thriller in game one. That is our nightcap right here on ESPN2. And Ray, as you take a look at this one, as, as impressive as Jaguar has been, uh, Mike Babcock has to take a look and say to his team, you know what, we haven't really played our best offensive game yet against these guys. Well, maybe the reason they haven't played their best offensive game is they haven't had the puck in their hands very often. <laughs> Detroit's had the, the lion's share of the play. Jaguar's been the reason that Anaheim is up 2 nothing. What will be interesting to, to note here in Game 3 is the Red Wings are a far more experienced team. Will they be able to muster up what they need to get and then put some pressure on this young, inexperienced duck team. The Ducks have played very well defensively. They'd really like to get a lot more going offensively as well. And the key for the Wings, get traffic in front of Giguere. As often as they can. Get somebody in his face. Every time there's a rebound, scramble for the puck. I don't know that the Wings have fought hard enough for loose pucks in this game. I expect them to play very well. On the other end, cujo has got to make some saves because he just hasn't done it so and far. And if he doesn't, Ray, is there any chance we'll see Manny Legacy, do you think? If they're down three games, yeah, you yeah. might see them because yeah. it's, a, it's a spark that, that Dave Lewis might try. But they didn't bring the, uh, Cujo in here to be the, the backup goaltender. They're going to win or lose with Curtis Joseph. If he loses game three, there's going to be all kinds of heat on both Dave Lewis and Curtis Joseph in Detroit. These guys were brought in to succeed, and they haven't done it so far. We'll see if Cujo rises to the occasion again. That's 10.30 tonight on ESPN2. Patty Waugh has risen to the occasion thus far. Make that nice paddle save on West Walls. Then a little bit later on, Joe Sack. His second of the postseason has the Avs on top. Two zip after two. This is Labatt Blue, the clean, crisp lager imported daily from Canada. Its refreshing, honest taste comes from a... Sorry, oh, my bad, my bad. I got carried away a little. Uh, we're going to need another blue over here. This one's spilled. Can we get another blue, please? Cold, like this one. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Saab 93 Sport Sedan just received a five-star rating for collision safety performance from the European New Car Assessment Program. Hi, Tom Bodette. If you want to save a little extra cash, check out Quick 6 Web Bargains at Motel6.com. It's the fastest way to save. See? Told you. We'll leave the light on for you in a core hotel. NBA. Fridays on ESPN. Finals tickets. RSVP. My bags are packed. Finals tickets. Let's get the party started. Get in the AT&T Ultimate Fan Zone sweepstakes. Log on now to NBA.com slash ATT Fan Zone to enter for a chance to win a trip for two to an NBA Finals game. Trip to the Finals. Sweet. I'm all about bright lights, homie. NBA Finals. Sign me up. Watch the NBA on ESPN Friday nights to see if you've won. Daddy's coming to La La Land. I tell you, people love digital cable for the strangest reasons. Like I'm showing this lady all the interactive features, and I get to the blackjack, she goes nuts. Head, head, gimme, 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 come on, come on, come on. Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Nuts. Insight Digital Cable has lots of interactive features. Everyone's got their favorite. What's your insight? Need cash? Head for Cash Loan and Security. They'll buy your stuff. Cash Loan and Security, US 52. Like to shop? Cash Loan and Security offers guitars, VCRs, tools, video games, big TVs, diamond rings. Save big! Cash Loan and Security, US 52. Get cash quick with Cash Loan and Security's Payroll Advance. Your personal check puts money in your pocket now. Cash Loan and Security, US 52. Need a loan? Cash Loan and Security loans money on items of value. Bring it in. Walk out with cash. Cash Loan and Security, one block south of Union. We are back. Canucks and Blues have gone to the first period intermission. And, Ray, it looks like Dan Cloutier has his legs back underneath him after that six-zip game one debacle. Made 26 saves in uh, game two and, again, nine in this first period. Yeah, and he made a couple uh, very good ones. One on Keith Kachuk on the power play. He looks a lot more solid than he did early in the series. Coming up after the Wings and Mighty Ducks, Barry Melrose and Ray Farrar and myself will break down the Wild Abs game, the game you're seeing right now. Plus, we'll talk about the Wings, and Ray will talk about his old team, the Islanders. It's all coming up a little bit later on tonight on ESPN2. Patty Wall with some amazing saves. Using the paddle on West Walls has kept this a two-zip lead for his team. This intermission report, presented by Southwest Airlines, the official airline of the National Hockey League. Michelin designed the cross-terrain SUV tires specifically for SUVs to help provide responsive handling and a smooth ride. You'd be surprised just how smooth. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. When your first name is Armor, you know there's some serious protection going on. Armor all protected. It doesn't just clean and shine, it protects. Can I write a check? Yo. Yo. <laughs> Yo. 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 Can I write a check? Yo. 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 Can I write a check? Yo. Next time, use the Visa check card instead of checks. It'll get you in, out, and on with life. Yo. Gee. Yo, gee. Yo. What's good? Sam? Subway's new Italian herb and cheese. The taste will bring you to your knees. Great bread makes a sandwich a true taste delight. You'll see for yourself with just one bite. Subway, eat fresh! <laughs> can't find my foot. I can't find my foot. Can't find my foot. Can you help me? <laughs> gotcha! The magic of nighttime works better out here. Go on, pursue your passions, go RVing. Call for a free video and visit an RV dealer.
players. Way back there in the goal. experts. His track record is pretty flawless. The definitive source for everything baseball. Catch all the scores and highlights from around the league. Baseball tonight. All season long on ESPN and ESPN2. The Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN2 brought to you by Labatt Blue. In quarter from Canada, look up, see blue. 1-800-CALL-AT&T for collect calls. It's free for you and cheap for them. And buy Saab. People who test drive a Saab usually buy one. Back in St. Paul, Minnesota. Just about set for third period action. The Avalanche lead 2-0 over Minnesota in what has been really a very evenly played game. Clearly the goaltending advantage to Colorado. But everybody's going to see the highlights of the big plays and the big goals. How about a little play that led to the big goal? Yeah, veteran Mike Keane has been around, won three Stanley Cups for three different teams. And here's what he does inside his own zone. Now, he is fortunate because he jumped up here. That could have easily been a charge. But watch him follow through here, making a one-on-two, a two-on-four. Again, Mike Keane driving in the net. That backs everybody towards him. And Joe Sackett made an unbelievable play to cut into the middle. And with that play, he drills it up high over the glove side. Rollison screened, has no chance, a world-class shot. Adam Foote gets the assist on that because he rifled it around the boards, but Keane made the play happen. Minnesota fans, Panger, will look at that and say, hey, you know what? Keane made the play happen. Richard Park also made that play happen. Park had a second or two, and for whatever reason, couldn't get his stick on the puck. Maybe it hopped over a stick or either way, but that allowed the puck to go outside the zone. I'm sure Richard Park is kicking himself for that play, and he'll take the hit on the play. Either way, it is 2-0 as we open up period number three. Foot able to get it ahead momentarily. Foot, by the way, is the only player who is plus two so far in this game for Colorado. And Blake will shoot in. Rob Blake has played his usual monster game, monster moments. Gobbling up time and making every play in all three zones. Wild come out. Here's Marion Gavlin. He's one off two. Now he's got some help in running. Delayed penalty is coming up. Did not see it, Pang. Maybe back away from the play. And it's going to be Joe. It's a hooking call on Joe Sackick. An interesting that Joe Sackick, he hasn't skated in practices, morning skates. You have to wonder, with his pain threshold and how much he can handle, if he's not suffering a little bit from some kind of minor ache or, or Tony Granato just saying, just save it for all the games. It's going to be a long ride, or they hope it will be anyway. And there's the play. Key power play here for the Wild. A key power play to get themselves back into this hockey game trailing 2-0. Sackett, obstruction hook in the 35 seconds. Fourth power play of the game for Minnesota. Also something significant, Panger, should there be whistles and face-offs during this power play. Sackett won't be out there to be able to take those draws. That's right. Bit of a double whammy against Colorado. Wrapped around the boards. We'll set the power play for you. Ronning and Zuzin will play the point. Here's Ronning. Touched it across to Zuzin. He's pressured by Shant. Shant and Keene are the forwards for Colorado. Foot and Blake on the defense. Fill out your four penalty killers for the Avs. Here's Ronning. Towards the net. Stevenson was in front of the net along with Dupuy. Keene in all sorts of trouble. Pierre Marc Bouchard tried to poke it away. I'd say Keen has the experience edge there. Yeah, absolutely. But that was a subtle little shot by the, the veteran Cliff Ronning from the point. It, it wasn't a hard one, but it fluttered on through there. Patrick Waugh just looks more and more comfortable as this series goes on. Here's Messier. Oh. Tried to put it behind the net, put it right in front instead. And the Avs were fortunate and able to make the play and get the clear. Derek Morris shooting it down the ice. He and Greg DeVries now on. Here's Zoltak in the middle. Zoltak will backhand it in deeper. Trying to set things up. Sekarac came in from his point position. Messier got to it, couldn't clear. Brunette got a couple of whacks at it. Here's Zoltak now. He'll reverse it up the near side. Zoltak into the glass as he forced it in deeper by Morris. Here's Sekarac. Return feed. Shot caught the glass. 
Messier powered around the boards and all the way down. Five seconds left in the power play. You know, you, you remember the key power play goals in game one in Denver and how the weak side player on Minnesota, whether it be the defenseman or just the player Gabbert scored also, how the coverage for Colorado wasn't that good. It, has it not gotten better? The weak side forwards really, really collapsing down low and helping out the D. The Abs are really missing the net. Rather, I mean, the bigger part, the Wild are really missing the net. They registered no shots on goal on that last power play and lost the golden opportunity. Back to five aside. Mitchell put that one on goal, and that might have gone off Flaken back into Wah. And he's able to hang on. Willie Mitchell uses the maximum length of stick, which is 63 inches. Zdeno Chara has the exception because he's 6'9", but when you've got a stick this long, you can really get a lot of torque on it. He shoots the puck hard. And Patrick was just beginning to learn about the shooters. And from our Southwest Airlines goal cam, keep it on the right toe. He gets it down on the butterfly. He made that save. You can't see the puck coming towards you, but you saw the movement with the leg, and then it popped out, and you're right. It hit Blake and came right back to him. Why should Chara get the exception? Thing? I understand he's a little taller than everybody else, but a rule is a rule. A rule should apply to everybody. I agree. I absolutely do agree. Say it softly. I want a full investigation. Somebody get Coley on the phone. Mike Murphy's here. We'll go chat with Mike. <laughs> that center. And shot in. Foot lost his stick. He'll go get a new piece of lumber as Patrick fires around the glass. Kept in by Hendrickson. Derek Morris able to clear. Trying to catch the abs in a change. Ronning. Let it go. Patrick seemed to have some trouble with that one. Yeah, he was lunging towards it. That was a very awkward move by Patrick. It tells me that he lost sight of it at some point. Here's Ryan Preck for Colorado. He'll shoot it around the boards. Schultz gets there first. He and Battaglia go to the glass. Dupuis checks Wilsey. And it's back behind the Minnesota net. Chopped that and reversed. Ryan Preck's going to get there first. He pays for it. He's a touchdown by Willie Mitchell. At center now. Colorado will get to it with Battaglia. Finally gets some help. Mitchell, another body check. Yeah, that'll be obviously a two-line pass. West Walls on the receiving end. Our 1-800-AT&T storyline. Patrick Waugh, 16 saves tonight. Might be thinking about career playoff shutout number 23. And our storyline replay here. This save here is the turning point of the game, maybe the series. Fantastic save by Patrick Waugh on the first one, then the second one by Ron in the reaction of Wes Walls, who thought he had the game time goal. Absolutely says it all. Seems like every single day there's another great save during the Stanley Cup playoffs that everybody is talking about. Martin Brodeur made a couple of dandies this game yesterday against Boston. Rob and P.J. Axelson on a rebound. Here's a chance, side of the net now. Avs can't tee it up. They'll get a second crack at it, though. Here's Forsberg behind the net. Walls on him as usual. Kuba plays the body. And the Wild able to get it down. Down on the full check. Marshman will get there first, but Wild shoots it up. That's a good, nice, nice, strong play by Patrick. Going on his forehand, playing it right up to the winger, beyond the blue line, so you know it's going to go out of your zone. Back in the Minnesota end, here's Joel Doc. Softly for Park, who one touches it to Susan, and they shoot in. Minnesota has the only shot on goal. Here in period number three, we're coming up on six minutes in. Sackett took his man down. Park wanted a call, wouldn't get one. And Zuzin couldn't hold the zone. It comes all the way down. And icing will be called. The one thing now with Jacques Lemaire changing up this lineup a little bit and inserting the youngster here, Mark Bouchard, is that at the end of the year, Bouchard and Gabbert had a great deal of offensive chemistry. So as the minutes trickle down and Jacques Lemaire is trailing in this game, you know, he can throw that tandem back together and see if they can't maybe create a little bit of magic, a little bit of flow together. But right now he's going to keep Bouchard with Dupuis and Stevenson. Here's DeVries behind the net. 
Pushed out to center ice. And softly into the Minnesota end. Sekarash is back for it. Chance and Mark Bouchard do battle. Here's Wilson behind the Minnesota net. Tricky little pass in front, but the Wild are there to knock it back behind the goal. Here's Messier for Chance. Sekarash kicked it, but right to Messier. Wilson off the side of the net. Another tricky play by Wilson, and the backhander goes wide by Messier. And Rollison comes way out to cover it up. I'll take Chris. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll take Chris's buddy. You play net? Why not? Look up, see blue, look back blue. Steve out. Good hands. Oh, thanks. Instinct. Miss Lewis. It is Miss, isn't it? Uh huh. Yes. Could you tell me again how you use 1 800 Call ATT for collect calls? Well, I just dialed down the center. With what, Miss Lewis? With what? You dialed down the center with 1 800 C A L L A T T. It's free for you, cheap for them. <sighs> so good. You sure this guy's a cop? Save on every call. Dial 1 800 Call ATT for collect calls. The Saab 9.3 Convertible. So many adjectives have never been so affordable. Lease a Saab 9.3 Convertible as low as $399 a month for 48 months. For details, see your Saab here. Uh, Kuba's going to go off for cross-checking in front of the net. And it wasn't a cross-check. It was a forearm body move to eliminate the man. But the puck wasn't anywhere near them. If anything, it could have been an interference call as well. Easy for us to call it up here. But nonetheless, Colorado's on the power play. Kuba's third minor of the game, Penger. Yep. Cross-checking officially is what the call is. 634. Colorado's third power play. Moore swings it around for Blake. Missed it. Loose puck side of the net. Sackick will get to it now. Hey, Duke in a high slot. And Morris for Blake again. Stick save, Rollison. Can't corral the rebound, and West Walls has it. Off Ronnie Loxenden. Loxenden gave it back to Walls, able to keep it momentarily. And here are the abs right back with Haydu, the NHL's top goal scorer in the regular season. Hendrickson got in the way of that shot to block it, and it's just pushed out to center ice. Too early for Minnesota to take a chance shorthanded here, Panger? Too much time left? Here's Haydu, back behind the net. Schultz rotated with him. Here's Sackett down low. No one in front of the net for Colorado. Forsberg and Sackett both behind the goal line. And now they'll separate. Here's Sackett, cross, Morris, let it go, shot blocked. Blake will fire, blocked by Hendrickson. Morris has a lane if he wants it. Instead, dishes off to Forsberg. Trying to get some motion and some time and space. Sack it for Forsberg. Cut the front and scores! Peter Forsberg scores the goal as he loses his helmet. Power play goal. 3 0 Colorado. Uh, all the big boys have scored for the Colorado Avalanche. Tangay opened up the scoring. Sackick scored in the second. And now Peter Forsberg, as his lid was knocked off, jammed the puck to the far side. A little shake and bake right here with Joe Sackick. Sackick going to the middle. You have to respect that. Give and go. Off the foot. Great stick handling maneuver. Before Mitchell can get there, Peter Forsberg pays the price here in front of the net and scores a goal. A huge goal to really suck the life out of this building and I'm sure the will of the Minnesota Wild. 12.05 left here in the third. It's now a 3-0 Colorado, Colorado lead. That's the first power play goal of the evening. The other two have been even strength. Heidel breaking it on Rollison. And he's able to make the save. Here's Gabrick. And we'll see Minnesota try and open things up as much as they can. Forsberg on the power play from Sackick and Morris at 7.55. 3-0 Colorado. 
would appear to be an insurmountable lead for the Avs with their goaltender Patrick Waugh, but we'll see. Broken up. Here's Sekarash. They're going to get it across to Pui. will shoot it off the end boards. Foot will get to it. Away from Gabrick and out of the zone. Glove down at center. Nice pass there to Reinfrecht. They'll drop for Keen over skating. Sekarash will just clear out the center, and that's where Blake is hanging out. Blake will let it go. Right pad save. Rollison. Rollison's not letting his buddy score. Are you kidding me? These Ontario boys have played hockey together since the age of five. That's quite a battle that they've got going. Actually, Rollison's made some unbelievable stop on Blake in this game. Blake has had, in this hockey game, he's had five or six real good scoring chances. And plenty of checks as well. Blake had the hit there on Stevenson. He's puck in the corner. Mark Bouchard and Messier are there. Marksman trying to get it away from Stevenson. And it's pushed back to the point. Long shot through traffic by Schultz. It is sticked aside rather easily by Waugh. Good play by Kuba to keep it in with his glove. That was a hard clearing attempt. Kuba went up and got it. Two on two against the wall now. Kuba trying to hold his own with his skate. He's spun around by Sackick. And the abs able to clear. The check thrown there by Schultz. And here's Walsh. They're just onside. Locks it in. Let it go. Missed the mark. Mitchell trying to keep in and can't. Here's Walls at center. Turning his attention more to offense and watching Forsberg for the rest of the night. Now they're down three to nothing. Ronning still wearing the captain C. We anticipate the return sometime soon of Minnesota captain Brad Bombardier, but he's still not ready. Here's Hayduk, girl shake and bake, trying to work on Zuzan. Here's Zuzan back behind the net. Past the midway point, period number three. Steve Levy, Darren Pang, and our ESPN2 hockey crew. First ever Stanley Cup home playoff game for the Minnesota Wild. Started out with a bang. And it's somewhat fallen apart since then. The Avs have looked like the superior team that they are with a 3-0 lead. Colorado has played a, a thorough type of Colorado, typical Colorado game, showing no weaknesses at all. Here's Heinold now trying to break in. And Mitchell, I think, was taken down by Chance in the offensive zone. Penalty coming up. Minnesota power play when we come back. But they trail by a score of three to nothing now, thanks to the work of the helmetless Peter Forsberg. a new roof and don't pay till 2004 now at Menards. Biltmore 35 year laminated shingles feature the look of wood shakes and are class A fire and wind rated or step up to the added protection of 50 year Biltmore shingles. All Biltmore shingles are on sale. Finish your roof project with cell even aluminum soffit and fascia on sale in 10 colors that never need painting. Cover your home with savings from Menards. Save big money at Menards. I'm Jack Hanna, and this is my daughter, Julie. And I'm Dr. Jennifer Jellison with my son, Andrew. Disciplining youngsters can be difficult, whether they have two legs or four. With children, that means staying positive with them. No hitting, no yelling. You can teach youngsters right from wrong in the same way. Praise them when they're good. Speak quietly but firmly when they misbehave. Remember, discipline doesn't mean to punish. It means to teach. Practice positive parenting. And your kids will love you for it. For positive parenting tips, call 1-800-CHILDREN. Jeff Chance in the penalty box, two minute tripping at 11-14. And the Avs look to add to their lead with their fifth power play of the game. The Forsberg recent goal was a power play tally. And 
and Minnesota. Thank you, Park. Minnesota will look to cut into that avalanche lead with this power play. Keen trying to get to it away from Marshall and does put it on rotting stick. He one touched it to Joltak to center. Sergei Joltak got it now. Got to step it across the line for Brunette. He'll go back to the point. Swung around to Ronnie. It was shot. More of a pass. Clearly looking for Brunette on that play. Steve sent down the ice. Clearly losing's losing. But if I'm the Minnesota Wild, I think the mindset is, let's put one behind Patrick and start there. Let's not be reading about Patrick Law shutting us down here in the first game of Minnesota Wild history. I don't think that's something they want on their belt. If they're going to be seeing that save of West Walls a couple on West Walls a couple times. Yeah. At Patrick Law. Yeah. Turning point in the hockey game. Uh, I, it actually began in the second period of game two for Patrick. That, that's when he started gaining momentum right there. Here's Stevenson behind, and that finds Kuba now. They'll go back to the point. There's Ronning's got a lane if they want to. Turns it off for the one time shot on the far side by Dupuis, and Wah was there as usual. Man, can he shoot the puck? Holy jumping. Pascal Dupuis' hero growing up was Michel Goulet, the director of hockey operations for now the Colorado Av Avalanche. He was a big Quebec Nordique fan growing up. And can he fire the puck? He reminds me a little bit of Goulet shooting that pill. Back behind the net. Hayduke gets to it for Colorado, and he'll clear. 3-0 Avalanche. 6.50 to play here on the third. And the power play is all but over. There it is now. Chance out of the box. One shot on goal with the man advantage. Cleared out to center. Zuzin will reverse it the other way. And there's Peter Forsberg. Forsberg and Sackick each have a goal and a point tonight as we get the whistle. Stay with us here on ESPN2 following our game tonight. The defending Stanley Cup champion Red Wings are in big trouble. In Anaheim to take on the Mighty Ducks. The Mighty Ducks lead the series two games to none. Game three is coming up. And there's what the Western Conference quarterfinals series look like. How about those Edmonton Oilers last night? couple of goals in the third period coming rather close two-line pass is the reason for the whistle and the Oilers lead the stars to go get Derry and Hatcher back for game four you know Steve we've spent all day long here talking to people in St. Paul and obviously Minnesota North Star fans and obviously they weren't happy in 1993 when Norm Green took this team the Minnesota North Stars anyway that played at the Met Center sent them over to Dallas only to win a championship but the Minnesota North Stars created such a lore uh, and I remember like it was yesterday the first NHL game I ever played and it was in Minnesota and uh, How'd that go for you? stars I gave up a goal in the first two minutes on my first NHL shot and Kurt Giles scored but still have great memories <laughs> I like those uniforms well, quite honest with you. by Patrick why it's interesting the wild don't really associate themselves with the old North Stars and one of the quotes from one of the executives with the wild says hey when you're married to your second wife, you don't talk about your ex-wife. Right. And so they've sort of separated themselves. Again, they're not playing in Bloomington. They're playing here in, in beautiful St. Paul in a brand-new building. Yeah, last professional team to do so was right here. It's a join to here, and that was at the old Civic Center. And that, of course, was the Fighting Saints of the World Hockey Association. Mike Shaky Walt. <laughs> Was he a goalie? The, no. Oh, it's the nickname Shaky, you know. Yeah, it is a good, it is a good goalie. <laughs> Got the shakes. 546 left. Three nothing abs. The X Games Global Championship coming in May on ESPN. Okay. I'll take Chris's buddy. You play that? Why not? Look up, see blue, Labatt Blue. Players. Way back there in 
The experts. His track record is pretty solid. The definitive source for everything baseball. Catch all the scores and highlights from around the league. Baseball tonight. All season long on ESPN and ESPN2. For the go-ahead goal. Under two to play. The clock. Hit it. Fantasy games and official NHL merchandise. The place to go is NHL.com on MSN. Five forty-six to play in game number three. Minnesota will look to even the series on Wednesday night back here. And those of you in the Minnesota area somehow watching this game, maybe on the replay. The only place you'll be able to watch the game live on Wednesday night game for the series is right here on ESPN2. Back behind the net. Look at the strength of Forsberg. Killing valuable time. And there is a penalty coming up. It's going to be an interference call. And Forsberg's going to go? And, and this is a real interesting call. I, I mean, the Colorado Avalanche are very... Forsberg, elbow! Oh, it's an elbow. A very subtle team in terms of interfering and, and throwing picks out. But that wasn't the case here. And, and what happened was, Forsberg here throws an elbow, but watch the cross-checks by Walsh right here on the lower back. One, two, and then Peter threw out a, four, uh, a little bit of a, a, an elbow. Colorado number 21, Peter Forsberg, two minutes for elbow. The elbowing penalty at 14.40, Minnesota to their sixth power play of the game. Their one win in game number one. They went two for three with a man advantage. And that was the difference in the game and a 4 2 win. 5 4 left. Get one here and then it's buckle your seatbelts. Let's see. Avalanche with Keen on the ice. Trying to clear Kant. Gets a second chance. Sackick does. And he is able to clear. Well, it's a game of adjustments in a, what potentially could be a seven-game playoff series. And now it's the Wild that have to make adjustments now. They have to create some better scoring angles on Patrick. I think Colorado's done a good job of keeping them to the outside here with the man advantage. Ronning back behind the net. Pierre Mark from Shard. Seems like he's almost late in the game getting power play time exclusively. Absolutely, because that's his skill. He's a playmaker. He's a guy that sees the ice. And even if this comes in a loss, he's getting solid playoff experience to take with him in the game number four, likely. Back to the point. Kuba let it go. Shot was blocked by DeVries. And it's cleared down the ice. 45 seconds, you might have heard. Left in the power play. Yeah, and that was Rollison, too, from, from the net telling Kuba that, if I'm not mistaken. Under four to go in regulation time. Back behind the net, Gabrick centers, Kuba across, here's Ryan, tip shot on the The wall is there! Gabrick redirected it, and Patrick Waugh got the left skate on it. Either that or it went off his stick and right off his own skate. Here's Holtak now, spinning away from the jack, cross ice Schultz. Who's going to get there, race for the puck, kept him momentarily by Minnesota. And across the line, here's Sackick now. Gabbert able to take it away. Locks it in. On the tape of Walls. Walls will make the drop. Cross for Schultz. Let's it go. It's blocked. And the counter marshal is shot wide. Flaming it towards the front of the net. Locks it in. Wouldn't have counted. Touch with a high stick. And that's the reason for the whistle as we send it back to Pat Boyle. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Canucks and Blues, that series also tied at one all. Zip, zip in the second period. Corey Stillman looking for Pavel Dimitra, and he puts the Blues on the board. It's now 2 nothing Blues on top of the Canucks. Doug Wade just scored. Boy, Pat, see where Pronger was right in front of the net on that play? Man, oh, man, without Chopper, their captain for the year, Al McGinnis. Getting Stillman back as well. Yeah. That's to help. 
Detroit and Anaheim. And it's coming up next as the Stanley Cup playoff action continues here on ESPN2. I mean, hard to imagine the Red Wings, that veteran club, ever getting nervous. But if they're ever going to be nervous, maybe tonight. Let's go back to Panger Vision as we potentially look ahead to game number four this year. Let's do so. So we were watching practice this morning. Both teams working on behind the net plays. And this is where Rollison is very good going post to post. And we've seen that in this series. Here's Manny Fernandez now as he's working on it. Different style. And it was possible that we would have seen him in this game. But the management and coaching decided to stay with their hot guy, Dwayne Rollison. You certainly can't blame them for that. But there would be a strong possibility, not blaming Rollison, but that Manny Fernandez would get the nod here in game four. With two consecutive losses, that would make some sense for sure. Pushed out to center ice. Hendrickson has stepped into there. They're going to say offside. Heino got a right glove up on Hendrickson. It'll separate. Well, only once all season when both goalies were healthy did one start three consecutive games. And Fernandez did that in November, the 23rd to the 27th. And there's a look at Manny on the left. Won a Memorial Cup for Bob Hartley, who's now the coach at the Atlanta Thrashers. He won that in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. So Jacques Lemaire has pushed all the right buttons. And they've made their decisions internally, and they put a lot of thought into it. And I know they consult a lot with my former partner, Bob Mason, who's their goaltending consultant. Penalty is coming up against Minnesota as Wah left for the extra attacker. And let's listen in. It's a 28 two minutes left. Here. And with 2.17 left, that'll do it with Stevenson headed to the box. Stevenson's got the chops going, huh? I don't mean the chop there, I meant the chops on the face. Oh, well, that was right to the hand. That's a good call by the officials, you know. I mean, you got to keep your, you know, you got to, you, you, you got to make sure that you call stuff. And if you let something like that get away, and then another guy takes sure. liberty, you know, pretty soon you got broken hands right there. And it was, it was stick on hand. And if it was on the shaft of the stick, the referee might have let that go, but it was right on the hand. Stevenson slashing at 17:43, Colorado's fourth power play of the game. Side of the net, stopped by Rollison. Puck is still loose, whacked at it, and finally we get the whistle as players come together. Side of the net, high note in there for Colorado. I think high note's been real good the last couple of games, boy, real good as Susan talks to Danny High Note, who's not afraid to get in the middle of anything. I know played 18 minutes and 20 seconds in game number two. That's a dramatic jump from the 12 and a half he played in game one. Good traffic in front. See Rico Hall's on the weak side. He's just looking for that puck to jump over there. Park goes over to him. High notes jamming and jamming and jamming. And the referee had already blown the whistle. Walcom there on the right. And he gave him the benefit of the doubt. Good job by Tony Granato here. The game in hand. Give some other guys some power play time. Give them an opportunity, guys who don't normally play on the power play. Foot, let the rocket go. Left pad saved by Rollison, and it's cleared down the ice. That's a really, really good point, and I think Tony Granato's done a good job all the way around. When you look at Forsberg in game two, really a must win for them. He went from 21 minutes in game one to 18-20. He's keeping his guys fresh and utilizing his third or fourth guys. Wrapped around the boards. That actually goes off the referee and right to Ryan Pratt. Now here's Keen. Again, not normally your power play players. Marchman, bit of a reward for Tony, also arresting some of his other key guys. Marchman, down low for Riku Hall. As, and this third power play unit for Colorado is pretty good too, Peg. <laughs> Very good, good puck movement. That fourth power play unit probably could be number one on some teams. Back behind the net, here's Keen. Off for the breeze. Final 60 seconds or so. Regulation time. I think this crowd, and certainly the Wild, looks like to see a goal by the home team. Haven't had a real chance to let it go and really cheer in the first ever home playoff game for the Minnesota Wild. The Piers are going to be shut out. Patrick Wild will just keep adding to his statistics. Here's Chance. Back to the point. Marchman fakes. And now released. And Chance. Good play to keep in. Wow. 30 seconds left. Here's Wilson. Hit by a wall. Tavriz will let it go through traffic. Shot blocked. And Minnesota will clear. 
That's a grind of a game for the home team when you don't score a goal. And clearly the difference in the game was their pressure early on. And in the first time Colorado came down with Rollison behind the net, the Avalanche ended up scoring. And little by little, the life of the building got taken away. It's been a low shot game for both teams. 18 all. And the lowest possible scoring game for Minnesota. Blanked by Patrick Waugh, who came up with one of those brilliant saves that everybody will be talking about in it's, this hockey game. It's a low congratulations to Patrick with that 23rd playoff shutout. But it's not about how many shots you have in the playoffs. It's about the quality of saves that you make at key times in the game. And with it being a 1-0 game, Tangay scoring the first goal, it was Patrick Waugh that made the save of the game and maybe the save of the series on Wes Walls. Couple of days off, and Wednesday night, game four, right back here at the XL Energy Center. Those of you in the Minnesota area, the only place to be able to see the game live is right here on ESPN2. This was one of those typically dominant games by Colorado, in which they did everything right in shutting out the Minnesota Wild. Colorado takes a 2-1 series lead in this best of seven. We'll see you for game four on Wednesday night. Right now, we'll send you back to the studio to Pat and Ray. All right, Steve Levy, thank you very much. An electric atmosphere in Minnesota as playoff hockey returns there for the first time since 92. But to end this one, we saw what you might expect from a veteran team like the Avs, the big guns stepping up, the Forsbergs, the Sackicks, and Patty Waugh. Yeah, Minnesota plays their system as well as any team in the league. And really, they've been so successful all year by trying to pack things in around their goaltender and capitalizing when they get an opportunity. But Colorado got the first goal today, which was very, very important. The Tangay goal took some of the wind out of the Minnesota Minnesota sales and actually Minnesota's best flurry of chances was in and around the second period off a wall giveaway around the boards but Sackick with the second goal a beautiful rush and Peter Forsberg tremendous move around the front of the net and Patty Waugh makes every save that he has to make he when he looks good early in the game he looks in, in it like he's never going to give a goal up he's invincible in there it seems to inflate in the net and Colorado draws a lot of confidence from that Minnesota didn't play that poorly but as you mentioned the best players have to be the best players, and they were for Colorado tonight. Well, the Wild clearly had some opportunities, especially around Patrick Waugh tonight. Uh, but that save on West Walls was tremendous. I mean, it, it's a one nothing game right there. It looks like it'll be the equalizer. Walls has his, his arms up in the air and thinks it's in. But Patrick Waugh continues to do that, and he needed that type of game to kind of get his legs back underneath him because he looked okay uh, by Waugh standards in the first two games. He did not play well in the first game, and really, they, were, they outshot Minnesota 18-3 to in the first period, and Patrick does not like being inactive in the net. Some guys respond pretty well when they don't have a lot of business to do at their end. Patrick needs to be busy. Minnesota got enough pucks on him in the first period tonight, seven of them, that you can see he felt pretty confident in the net. The save that he made on walls is one that we'll see for the remainder of the playoffs, but after he made that save, the puck went over to Cliff Ronning, who had a great chance on the net as well. Wall was able to dive back. He made the save. Shortly thereafter Joe Sackick scores and it's a 2-0 game. And you got to take a look at what Granado has done against one of the best in the business in Jacques Lemaire. Uh, a credit to, to Tony and his coaching staff. Tony's done a really good job in Colorado. One of Tony's big strengths is his ability to relate to his players. He had some one-on-one -on -one meetings this morning with the guys at practice. He sat down with Milan Hayduk. He sat down with Alex Tangay. Tony's a pretty friendly guy. He was a popular teammate. He's a popular coach. And these guys feel comfortable playing for him. Tangay was much better tonight. The number one line with Forsberg and Hayduk and Tangay was very good. Peter Forsberg took a lot of abuse tonight. Shows how tough he is. He was able to get, get a key goal late in the game to put it away. He took one penalty in in the game but he was physical throughout he's the leader of that hockey club offensively as Joe Sackick starts to get his game back together as well there were four early games in all the uh, Canucks and Blues their series is also tied at a game apiece as that scene shifted to St. Louis and Dan Cloutier Looks like he's getting back in a rhythm here, but Tyson Nash along the boards. What happened there with Daniel Sedin? Well, Daniel Sedin takes a run at, at Nash. It was real, should have been a five-minute boarding penalty. Nash goes off the ice. He was fine. He did an inter interview in, in between periods. Joel Quenville is going crazy, wants a five-minute boarding penalty. But look at this play by Corey Stillman. Back in the lineup, gets it over to Pavel Dimitra, and Pav Henry doesn't miss from there. Talk about veterans coming to the forefront here. about Dougie Wade there? Dougie Waite, nice move off the, around Keith Kachuk's screen off of Murray Barron. 
Doug Wade has had a very good series for St. Louis. The Blues coaches weren't that happy with the way Doug had played down the stretch. He's a key component if the Blues are going to advance. He's played very well in this series. So the Blues with a 2-0 lead in the second period in that one. The game you just saw the Avalanche take care of the Wild. 3-0 the final in that one. Steve Levy, Darren Payne call the action. They have more right now from Minnesota. Guys? All right, guys, thanks very much. Uh, really a, a workmanlike effort by Colorado, a road shutout in the playoff game, and really typical Patrick Waugh. He joins us once again, starting to make this a regular thing. <laughs> Waugh just outside the Colorado dressing room. And, uh, Patrick, it seems like you guys cool and calm. Certainly wouldn't let the crowd affect you here on the road, but it seems like you guys are really humming along totally the last couple of games. Well, we've, we've been playing really well on the road all year, and, and uh, there was no reason for us to not be confident today coming here. And... and um, we had a big play by Peter on for checking on their goaltender, and then uh, we put that puck in the empty net. It was a big, big boost for us. I mean, it took, gave us a one nothing lead, and and uh, we just uh, I thought we played really well as a team today. I mean, we uh, did a lot of good things out there. Well, we just showed that you, you 18 <clears throat> shots against and 18 saves for you, so not overly busy. But it's this time of year, Patrick. It's all about quality. So we're going to go to the turning point of the game and let you describe this unbelievable save on West Wall.